I'm... If you edit this out, you're a coward. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm just going to leave that clip in. If you edit this out, you are a coward. Um... <laughs> That's the beginning of the video. If you don't edit this out, you're a coward. Um... <laughs> um... That's the second part of the opening. And here we are. Wow. With with the best base three script. Yep. You're entitled to your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping that you would say, yeah, I agree. Sex and Violets is the best base three, base three script. No, and then it's we TB. Can... Come on. <laughs> it, no. I, there's no argument. I, I Yeah. I, I will say that I think that my love of Bad Moon Rising comes ostensibly from the fact that it gets ragged on so hard um but i think there's i agree it I gets ragged on so hard <laughs> <laughs> i feel like i feel like there's an ellipsis after that statement cookie <laughs> when you say it um but yep, i do think that's the I, point <laughs> So it's like I tried to say it so that there would be a little <laughs> after that statement. Because <laughs> I'm someone who rags on it. A little bit. It's fine. It's fine. It's it's I I really appreciate um what Bad Moon Rising sort of brings to the especially as a new player, um, brings to the experience. Because where T B I think does a great job of, you know, sort of introducing characters that try to push you towards certain mechanics like executing people um, with the Undertaker, with the Empath, uh, or voting with the Butler. Um, I think Bad Moon Rising sort of makes it so that you really have to consider the actions that you are taking um, rather than just sort of sitting by and passively gaining information or maybe pointing at two people and finding out if they're a demon. Uh, in this case, you get to point to two people and they don't get to die but one of them is drunk. Uh, and so like, parsing that together, um, it's just a lot of fun. Uh, it, it, B Bad Moon Rising has, you, I know you will say it doesn't have some of the most fun rules. I think it has some of the most fun rules uh, that I look for. Fuck my beloved and nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> I do love fuck Uh All right, um, let's start this off. Are we gonna, Right. Do the the same sort of thing where you cover like bluffing for evil and I cover bluffing for good, or do we want to try a different paradigm? Why why change uh, perfection when why I can the, be evil again? Why, great, perfect. All right, <laughs> grandmother. Uh, so I think unlike TB, where you have washwoman, you have librarian, you have investigator, you have chef. Grandmother's really the only big role that has no reason not to die like every other role after day one is almost certainly doing something and grandmother's there so grandmother's a great bluff if you want to die yep like if you have a demon with a mastermind just want to get the mastermind day over and have a quick game great if you're an assassin uh, and you just use it day one, and you want to confirm your other minion. Great. Otherwise, like just don't don't expect to go past the game super long. It's the grandmother's the point here. You're probably just gonna die. You and I, because you're the have, grandmother. You and I have differing opinions on this. I, um, especially in Bad Moon Rising, I will say that when I find myself as a grandmother. I usually volunteer for death, partially because I don't want to have my grandchild die and also die in that same night. Yeah. Though, I, I, I think I'm changing my mind even in this moment because the power of that happening is great confirmation. And so where... Um, you know, if if I were the grandchild and an expendable role, maybe that's the better uh, sort of sacrifice to offer up. But I think that um, 
from an evil standpoint, I wouldn't necessarily say, like, in, in TB, you have an Undertaker or the possibility of an Undertaker. You have a reason to be executed as good. In Bad Moon Rising, there's not that, that reason. And so I don't necessarily abide the same sort of like, top fours should definitely offer themselves to be sacrificed as, yeah. as I would in TB. Um, if there's a virgin, absolutely. One of the top four roles should, should be nominating the virgin. Uh, but in Bad Moon Rising, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I haven't played enough games. I, honestly, like truthfully, as a storyteller, Grandmother scares me because there's no spy in Bad Moon Rising. There's no way that a evil player would know another player's role just because. And so Grandmother is this incredibly powerful confirmation of two people, and it very quickly aligns them, right? They, they are definitely on the same team, whether they're good, whether they're evil. But giving that level of confirmation to good is always a little bit of a like, oh, I don't know that I want to do this. Um, and then, of course, you know, the grandmother gets sailor sniped on night one and so uh, sees the uh, the sailor as the mayor, which is delightful. Um, it's not back, on the script and it's a different script. That. Shut but, up. Yeah. Listen, yeah. it <laughs> happened. And it was beautiful. Um, but so, yeah, I don't know. Uh, as good, I don't think I would ever bluff grandmother on that note because the only way that I would either I am going or like trying to hard confirm someone based on a weird night read um or uh i'm trying to claim that i was like drunken with by the sailor or that i was poisoned by the pucka or something like that and that can just dismantle that world can be dismantled very quickly and also it just doesn't why like why there's yeah i i don't i don't see uh, in bmr actually i think i would say this I don't see the need to bluff for the most part. Um, there's there's a couple of roles that maybe I would. Uh, like, if I'm the chambermaid, yeah, we're going to try to make ourselves seem as, like, you shouldn't bother trying to touch me um, as possible. But but with Grandmother, I, yeah, I don't, I don't really see any need for, for good to bluff. I will also point out the uh, thing I pointed out with Washerwoman, because Grandmother and Wash Grandmother is just the Washerwoman of BMR in a way. And I will also point out if you are bluffing Grandmother as evil, and you have any suspicion on you, or you are the grandchild, quote unquote, as evil, and you have any suspicion on you, yep. So does the grandmother. Yep. So does the other grandchild. And you can't be like, oh, well, maybe I saw a spy or something like that. There's no spy. Yep. You're on the same team, basically 100%. Yeah. So, like, you're you only, have to be, you're only, you are going to be under scrutiny. Your only 100%. possible out is a sailor drinking with you night one. Yes. That's, that's your only possible out. And if you find a sailor who does confess to having drunk with you night one as a member of the evil team, oh, it's a great out. But otherwise, it's um, it's a bluff you can definitely jump into. But unlike TB, where there are possibilities of you getting wrong information as any of the top four roles in BMR, there's not that possibility. So you are definitively aligning yourself with a person, um, and that can be that can be good, but it can also be very very dangerous. Yeah. Um, where where do you think this ranks? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm thinking like, I'm thinking either low-ish B or high-ish C. Like, I would take it as a minion if I didn't think I was going to be that useful with my ability overall. Or I would take it if, as a demon if I have a mastermind. But otherwise, like, I would never even dream of taking it. I could see, I could see high-ish C. I, I don't I think, think so. um, I don't think where a lot of the roles um like librarian etc were sort of like b tier for for tv i, I mm -hmm. think grandmother as a bluff specifically is i mean you know as good i would rank it f i i don't 
just just yeah. don't it's a bad idea um but i think that there's i think there's uh the possibility of trying to sort of go for that world but you have to be very careful how you navigate the game because you are definitely going to be aligned and when and when it comes out that you are the grandmother and your grandchild has sort of like been dwindled down to an even smaller and smaller and smaller group it's going to be really weird if both of you are alive yep um which is another reason why i said you have to be okay you, to you die. have to be okay to die um yeah yeah you you are the sacrifice you and and if you die early because you're killed for whatever reason if you you know are if if an outsider dies and you're the godfather claiming grandmother and you kill yourself like that is a there's a way that you can build a world around oh phew well i was the grandmother my grandchild wasn't killed so haha -ha, demon like you know you can build you can go with that but um but yeah i i i don't see higher than c yeah. i don't i don't see higher than c what i did because it's a the letter i'm not i'm not gonna even remotely give you any credit for that uh so next i'm i'm about to uh say a thing and that's going to be uh lore i'm not giving credit for that one either. okay all right i'm not i'm not even i'm not even gonna touch that <laughs> not not gonna touch that sailor uh so i don't think we brushed on this too much when talking to him in tb but especially when moving on to other scripts a lot of roles need like almost certainly require you to have some role either on your team or you have to be it and sailor is definitely one that kind of requires a da pretty much all the time um, unless you just want to die and be like, oh, well, I sailor drunk to that person and I died, so they should be killed next. Uh, unless you want to do that, you ha basically have to have a DA on your team so that you're not just, oh, well, there's a sailor who died immediately, so they're probably just bluffing sailor and we missed the DA or something. So it's a, it's a pretty good bluff if you have a DA on your team. You can tell people that they're drunk and they might believe you. Um, you can explain why you haven't died pretty easily because you can't if you're drunk and someone. Um, it might be a good idea to get like uh, an idea. This also helps with good too. It can sort of get people to tell you their role more easily because they'll say, oh, I'm an important role, so I don't want to be drunk. Or, oh, I'm not that important, so you can drunk me all you want. Uh, so it's great for figuring out people's roles. So it's pretty good, but also there's the very meta thing that comes with uh, BMR that is uh, double tapping. Be very concerned about the very meta BMR double tapping that's going to happen. <laughs> um, so it's... I, I don't think it's a good demon bluff, because especially if a sailor makes it to the end of the game and has, hasn't been double tapped, then... Mm. But... I think it's pretty good for like a minion, especially if uh, you have a DA. I think my favorite reason to give a demon sailor as a bluff, and I, I look at Innkeeper the same way, we'll, we'll cover it later, mm -hmm. is giving evil the chance to suggest that people's information is incorrect. Especially if they can track down a chambermaid, especially if they can, if or if it's a pucka game and, you know, you have a fool who just dies in the night um having there be that like well actually no that doesn't make sense never mind well actually with sailor it does yeah though it's it would be a very interesting actually no i would probably if if a sailor drunk with a fool i would probably drunk the fool oh absolutely yeah and so there's not a lot of information on bmr uh chambermaid is really one of the only recurring instances but being able to you know suggest to a professor who tried to resurrect the gossip that was executed the other day why their power didn't work uh is very very potent when that when that gossip is of course your actual godfather i don't think i would ever 
bluff Sailor as a demon, definitely. Unless maybe I was specifically the Zambul or we had a mastermind. But yeah. I do think it's I do think it's a one of the better bluffs on the script because of everything that you can do with it. Um, I don't think any sailor in BMR should ever expect to definitively live through to the end game. And that also makes it sailor a great frame. Um, maybe we should maybe we should do another set of guides where we talk about uh, the, the the classes based on how how frameable they are. <laughs> but uh, we're getting into some real we're getting into real some real now. some real theory um oh. but i but i do think uh i do think sailor is definitely um better than grandmother i'm not sure it's necessarily yep. a but i think it's b i think so okay yeah b um as good i I'm trying to think of what situations i would bluff sailor as good um, I did say when I covered evil, it's trying to get in a read on if people are okay with being drunk. And I think that can yep. help with evil players, like if they are bluffing something that should be able to be drunk, if they're like hesitant to be drunk, then that can usually be a good uh, read there. That's very true. Um, I think I think Sailor is one of those, um, maybe in a, a slightly different way than Gambler. It's sort of a way that you can try to sort of eke out what people might be and how important their their roles are and obviously no one on this script really likes to be drunk with because in a very weird sort of twisty turny way every single role maybe maybe exorcist actually um <laughs> but in in a weird way every role on this script has a lot of power um, tea lady protecting two people as long as they're both good is crazy. Once you have drunk with the tea lady, suddenly you don't know if if it's just because they were evil and you are drunk, if it's because you drunk with the tea lady and they're actually both good. And so while no one really wants to be drunk with, it creates this this sort of interesting sort of paradigm. Maybe courtier actually. Courtier is probably fine. Pacifist is depending probably on when fine. they use it. Yeah. Pacifist actually almost. Pacifist definitely... is an outsider. Yeah. Pacifist is not an outsider. We're gonna. <laughs> I'm slapping that down right now. No, um... I'm kidding. It's minstrel. Um... <laughs> <laughs> um. Or goon actually. Goon is a great. Yeah, great goon absolutely. But also, if that goon is like half the players who played the game, they definitely don't want to be it's, drunk it's by true. a sailor. It's very they want true. to be evil. I know, I know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I I think sailor is is a great bluff for sort of eking out information from from yeah. people. Uh, the best one, chambermaid. Uh, first off, we have to place it. I'm assuming you've already placed it and not told me where you're placing it. Um, oh, Sailor? I thought we agreed on B. Oh, that's true. You're right. I just completely... You just said a whole lot after you said B. That's true. I also that's do right. want to point out Sailor's a great bluff if you're sitting next to a claimed teen lady and you just want to disguise it as Sailor Science so that your neighbors don't die. Also true. Just yes. uh, throwing that out there. Now we can move on to Chamber B. Okay, great. Um... Just like Grandmother, there's no spy on the script. So you are going to have to take some some pretty big guesses a lot of the time. Um, like on your first day, you're going to have to take two people and be like, I sure do hope that these two <laughs> yep. of these two, one of them exactly wakes up. Let's take a guess here. If not, well, Guess I'm done with it. Um, so I think that I also do. We probably should talk about Chambermaid being on the script when talking about bluffs, because I don't think we've covered that. And that's a pretty big bluff uh, shut downer for a lot of these. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Chambermaid is yeah. incredibly powerful. It doesn't yeah. or maybe it doesn't sound as powerful as like you know, fortune teller, where you're just learning demons. But tracking people's waking patterns mm -hmm. is absurd, especially when you get to, you know, like, a demon 
that's like a zombul has to bluff some sort of role. And if the chambermaid is watching the zombul like a hawk, there's no role that follows a guaranteed zombul pattern. Yep. Where they sometimes wake up and they sometimes don't. And so the uh, evil will be having to flounder a little bit as to suggest why the chambermaid might be getting misinformation. And this is where having an innkeeper bluff, having a sailor bluff can really potentially come in clutch. Though the chambermaid is probably going to say, stop drinking with me. But yeah, no, chambermaid is incredibly powerful. And so bluffing is evil. Having it, having it actually as a bluff for evil um, itself is really powerful yeah. for evil. The, the, yeah, chambermaid is definitely, I think, one of the more uh, things you want to put on, in the bluffs to be like, well, you the first two bluffs are fine. You only have one minion. I'm just going to put chambermaid there so you know you don't have to bluff something that the chambermaid can't just shut you down with for. Um, but also, yeah, bluffing chambermaid is sort of like you have to figure, like, have your team figure out role you have to guess day one just completely and utterly yep. or be like be like well this person didn't wake how i saw them so they're evil not me and win that which is hard and then for every other night past that you either have to keep guessing or figure out everyone's roles very quickly and or have your team figure out their roles very quickly and tell it to you which is hard to do. <laughs> I think hard. this is probably yeah. the one of the easier scripts to manage to do that with, just because uh, people tend to be more honest on this uh, than a lot of other scripts. But also, there's this thing called lying that good players do. So... Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> this is a bluff you can take. <laughs> As good, uh, I think. I don't know that I, I. I think if I were bluffing chambermaid, it would be because I had basically found a chambermaid and was a a, a slightly more expendable role. Um, by which, on this script, I mean almost any role. Yep. I really think chambermaid is uh, is the absolute powerhouse for good. It's and and understandably so because it it just gets like consistent information of a very straightforward sort, whereas everyone else has to make some really choice uh, choice decisions and then interpret what happens based on that. As the gambler, you gambled someone and you died that night. Okay, but was it just a gossip kill? Was it an assassin? Did you execute the lunatic yesterday and it's a godfather? What's yep. going on? Um, chambermaid, very straightforward, barring again, being protected by the innkeeper being made drunk or being drunk with by the sailor. That's really the only sort of thing that can happen. Um, aside of maybe like, I guess, you know, being poisoned by the pucka, but given that you're probably going to die the following night. Though, if you were protected by the innkeeper after a night of being poisoned, ah, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> just uh, just something I want to see happen. When, when, let's, let's play some BMR. <laughs> we can just play Magic by Numbers. Chambermaid makes an appearance there too. Oh, good. I, I probably don't like it there either. <laughs> oh, no, come on. Have you never played Magic by Numbers? I think I've played it once, Okay. but I, I think the few times that you've run it on stream, I've either just been in chat or not there. Okay. Uh, where where do you think Chambermaid gets ranked here? Uh, I, I think C is the highest. I think D is the correct. Ooh, I was actually thinking more in grandmother lines of B or C, but uh... it's it's such a it's such a gamble. If you get it, it's it is great, a gamble. but is like a you're consistently like you have to have such a good re it's like bluffing Undertaker without a spy. It can be done. If you do it, that's great. But also, good luck. <laughs> As an aside, I have done that twice. Uh 
both You're times, you. both you times as the Scarlet Woman. Why? <laughs> Why? Why have you done this? Oh I, my god. I think, like, if you can do it, great. But all, it also has the fortune teller effect of if you haven't died a good portion into the game, yeah. you're also going to get eyes on you because Chambermaid's the number one person you should be killing 100%. I think I think C is highest, I but I would put D. If you want to put C, I'm down to put C. I, let's, I'm, I'm going to put C. I don't think it deserves... I don't think it deserves D tier. It doesn't deserve the D. Um, C for kind of okay. That's all for uh, yes, yeah. That's what that's what I have. I forget what you put for um for S, but uh, I have S as in yes. I have it as super good bluff. Oh, okay, um, I think mine's better. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I I had funnier ones for TB, and I think those were erased, uh, and we'll never I'll never figure it out again. The People only one I remember see. was B being better than C, which it is still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, ooh, your favorite role. Yep, this Exorcist. is a role in the. <laughs> you could say your favorite role sarcastically for like ninety <laughs> percent of the I roles could. here. <laughs> like, again, I'll. I've said it once. I'll say it again. BMR is a fine script filled with the worst roles imaginable. Um, Exorcist, like, it, like, other than, uh, uh, Mastermind Bluff, uh, trying to distract from it being a Mastermind Day, or Poe Charge near the end where you're trying to kill anybody but you so that the Poe can go off, like, Exorcist is interesting. It also has the same effect of Chambermaid, where if you don't, if you aren't dead like halfway into the game, you're gonna have eyes on you for not being dead. Um, it's like it's fine. Like if you want to have, um, if you're doing the mastermind thing, if you're doing the Poe thing of you want to explain why there's not deaths happening when there should be deaths happening. Yeah. Great, amazing, good, good bluff. But also, if you don't, like, like you can also, like, fake a like, missing a pucka shot, like, your pucka thing gets executed. That's sure. another good one. Yeah. But also, shrug, if you're alive in the final three, and there's actively murders happening, you're probably just going to be the one who dies. So I think it's fine. I, I do but... think I see more demons taking this bluff than minions. And I, I honestly, in this, in, in BMR, I do think that's a mistake. I, I don't think yeah. Exorcist is a, in, in, in a sort of similar fashion to, um, you know, taking uh, Fortune Teller as the demon in TB. Yeah. Um, getting to final three as Exorcist, as Chambermaid, as Fortune Teller, you're going to have a big target on your back. Um, mm -hmm. Especially if, uh, you know, you, you're claiming that certain people have, with with people consistently dying, um, you're gonna have to like find a real way to spin it. Um, I do think because of that, it's it's great as a minion bluff. Because I will you can say, even... I think it's the best mastermind bluff. Probably, like you can make arguments about others, but I think it's the best mastermind bluff. Mastermind is it's it's a pretty good. Oh yeah, actually, yeah. I didn't even think of that. That's. That's, that's pretty great. But in terms of it, bluffing good, I don't see any reason to bluff Exorcist aside of, again, you sort of feel like you're a relatively expendable role at the point. Maybe you are a professor who's, you know, successfully resurrected someone, confirmed with them. Um, because Exorcist is, it's a threat to the demon, but I don't think it's, especially with so many other ways to die, uh, or for people to die on this script, I don't think it's the chiefest threat. Like, most demons will eventually want to kill an exorcist, but even if you get exorcised early on, there's enough reason for there to be no deaths in the night on this script that it's not necessarily that big a deal. 
And in that case as well, if there's a gossip kill, or if a gambler dies, or you have an assassin or whatever and they decide to go off, you're probably fairly well covered. And if you are exercised, you know exactly who the problem is, so you can deal with them whenever you want, because thank god, Lycanthrope is not on the script. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I don't Lycanthrope, know. if on the script, would be terrible. Would be so and bad. And now I want to make a BMR with Lycanthrope because oh. that's terrible, <laughs> and I want to. I want. To, it makes the script so much worse. Just, I didn't think you could make the script worse. Just, just, yeah. put, just put Lycanthrope on here and put Evil Twin on here. Oh yeah, I agree. <laughs> so good, so good. Such um, a good combination. Anyway. It, <laughs> bad combinations can exist on scripts without things being horrible. Yeah, I agree. Like, this is a great example of a script with bad combinations of roles. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, in terms of bluffs, I, I do think it's... I think it's better, not necessarily as a demon, but like... I think it's a. I think it's much. I think it's easier to spin than grandmother or chambermaid. Yeah. I don't think I'd like not recommend taking it, um, especially if the if the storyteller gives the demon exorcist as a bluff. Uh, I think it also sends the powerful message of just like you will never be interrupted in the night. Like yep. that's that's not something you have to worry about. Find the things you have to worry about. Um, yeah. And so, like, having those moments where three people somehow die in the night, if there's the possibility of, you know, a Poe charge, like, trying to sell that world. But I think it's up there with Sailor. I don't think it's awesome. I don't think it's s rank by any means, but I think it's one of the better ones to lean in on. I will make the argument that I think it's S for specifically Mastermind. I think it's uh, like A for Poe and I think everything else is B, so I'm down to say B too. You think it's A for Poe? I think if you, if it's a 12 player game and you're like halfway through the game and you Poe charge to the point where you are going to have three attacks, you are going like basically anybody but you dying at that point is going to cause you to get three attacks you to almost certainly get a win i think that is like a great time to be like i am the exorcist i saw this person i picked this person last night there was not that many kills i think that we go for this person today and not me and i yeah. think if you do that then that would distract people enough so that you can get that po charge off and potentially win the game i think i can see that yeah also, I would say this is D for Shab, because if you're just going <laughs> Shab and you're just killing and there's an exorcist in the game, then it's like, well, you haven't killed a demon and also you're still alive. And if you should sink two kills, then the, the person you're claiming you picked is going to die. And then it's going to be you. Yep. <laughs> yep. I, I think B is the option here. I could see an interesting um, Shab uh, game where you kill two of your minions or maybe maybe just one of your minions early you then sink two kills one of them being one of the minions that you killed and suggest an exorcism took place to regurgitate actually no that doesn't work never mind maybe hold on Whatever. I'll it's ponder almost... this. I'll ponder this uh, <laughs> later. We're not going to do this right now. Yeah. We're, we're, we'll ponder this in another time. We'll ponder this in another time. Um, uh, speaking of uh, interesting roles, um, oh. innkeeper. Innkeeper, I think, is one of those. Was one of the roles on BMR. I don't actively hate. I know. Surprising. <laughs> I the fact that I have to mention that I don't actively hate a role on this script really says a lot about how many roles on the script I actively do not like. Um, but anyway, um, I think that this is uh, this is one of the better bluffs. This is, I think, to the point where we said chambermaid. If you live past the halfway point. 
uh, you're gonna get a lot of scrutiny. Exorcist, you said that. This is gonna get the most scrutiny if you make it anywhere into the game. Because if you make it like, if you are final three with an innkeeper and you claim that you picked the two other people that are alive and everybody else died, yep. I think you just die yep. 100%. <laughs> yeah. This is the worst demon bluff, except maybe the situation I said Poe charge earlier where you can do that with the, po the innkeeper. Uh, I think like, this is a good bluff if you want to say that people are drunk and you are also okay with dying at some point because if you make it anywhere far, you're just gonna die. That's just how it kind of works most of the time here. Um, I think it also can explain why stuff like kills aren't happening as well. So like if your demon does get exercise, you can say, well, I'm the innkeeper, so it could be them and you can kill them if you want, but I'm the innkeeper. So it could have also been that, and it's twice as likely to have been they hit one of my protections than you hit the demon. Yep. So I think it's, again, I think it's completely and utterly uh, a fine bluff for a minion who's okay to die. Or, I guess, Zumble, because uh, sure. that's okay to die. Yep. But, like, if you're going anywhere far into this game as somebody who can protect two people, you're gonna die. Yeah, I think. Um, I think. Interestingly, we're we're seeing a pattern emerge, where so many of these roles are so bad to end up in final three, and yet, like some of them are going to end up in final three, uh, which which maybe like you know in TB it's weird if the fortune teller and the mayor and the soldier are all in final three. Like, that's just something, yeah. what's going on? Um, but in BMR, because of the fact that there's a, uh, there, there's even more of a, like, what the fuck is going on? Why, <laughs> why have I not, why there's have I not so been killed? There's only so many of them who can die at the end of the day. So, like, when I'm saying, like, if they make it to the final three, they're almost certainly going to die. For most other roles, it's like, well, only so many of these, if they make it to the final three, they're almost certainly going to die. Some of them have to make it to final three. Yeah. Innkeeper 100% is just going to die in final yeah. three. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, there's there's almost there's almost no world that I think an innkeeper makes it to final three and innkeeper yeah. doesn't get executed at that point. Um, so yes, in a similar way, I I do think that it's it's great for a minion because the minion can you know if they are if they overhear the chambermaid like well first they should just tell the demon to kill the chambermaid but if they overhear the chambermaid got like a weird pattern it's like oh well I protected you because whatever and also it's a great way to like if you were have innkeeper as a bluff it's a great way to gain the favor of the chambermaid because you can potentially keep them alive quote unquote um and if your demon and if you found out it's a shab game and your demon sinks a kill at night it makes it even more realistic so uh but i but i agree it's not Maybe not the best idea as a demon, unless you are specifically the Zambul, or unless you have a mastermind. Yeah, I, I do think this is another great one for a demon with a mastermind, but also, like, you could probably bluff just about anything with demon with a mastermind, and maybe get away with it. Which, I don't know if that's a good thing for a mastermind mm -hmm. or not, but, yeah, you can, you can get away with that, yeah. As good, I see no reason to ever bluff in Keeper. Yeah. Unless, again, you are trying to draw yourself yeah. as a target. Um, but throwing around, like, even just fabricating information as to whose information might be incorrect or, or anything really doesn't help good. Um, especially with so much, like, so much of a lack of information. If you accidentally suggest that you protected the chambermaid they're going to be doubting their information and that's just going to like either put you in a world where you are evil and you are making this claim um or where the chambermaid information is actually incorrect and therefore you need to reinterpret it and that could end up saving the demon or or the minions um so i don't think outside of the you know, I'm a relatively expendable role 
um, or or I've I've used my ability in the case of the professor, the courtier. Uh, I don't see any any reason to, or even maybe grandmother. If I was the grandmother, yeah, sure, I'll bluff and keep her. Like, come after me, demon. Um, kill me in the night. That's great. Uh, but um, but yeah. yeah. Uh, B. I think it's like A tier minion bluff. Uh, I, I agree. And it's an F tier demon bluff in most cases. So I'm down to put like B or C, yeah. This is, we need, maybe we need like, we need two, we need, two, we need two, we need two separate. Like we didn't need this for TB because you can just bluff anything in TB and probably maybe win. Like, even a D-tier bluff in TB. Quick shout out to the <laughs> AB Demon <laughs> Virgin Claim game I did where I won, which almost certainly is going to be on YouTube. Oh, absolutely. Um, 100%. Oh, absolutely. That should be the game that pops up directly after the tier list for TB. Okay. All if right. it doesn't, okay. Okay. If, okay. if it doesn't, uh, then everyone write in the comments that that should have happened. <laughs> There you go. That's your. That's your. That's me getting you support. That was. This is probably getting edited out. That was a but... lot of fun. <laughs> this is probably getting edited out. Um, Maybe I don't know. But if I edit this out, I am a coward. Uh, you are a coward. Yeah. <laughs> I think B or C. I think I think B. I I, I don't think it's quite to the yeah. level of of C. Um, and I do think it's very highly rated as a minion. Like it's. You say A, I think it might even be S for me as as a minion. Um, I think you can do yeah. so much with Innkeeper in terms of controlling information or or suggesting why certain things didn't work or suggesting why certain kills didn't happen or, or any of that. Um, and so as long as you don't mind being expendable or possible possibly being expendable, um, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, and also, if you are a minion bluffing innkeeper and you make it to final three, you're getting X instead of your demon. So good job. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, place your bets as to uh, what will rank this next one. I've, I've said it a lot of times before, and I'm going to keep saying this. If you're, if you're the gambler and you make it like super far in the game there's gonna be a little bit i think it's less than others but like there's gonna be a little bit of credence to you're a gambler this far in the game and you haven't like messed up mm, i don't know about that one i think it's definitely less than like some of the other stuff we've said but i think most you're just gonna get a lot of credence with most of these bluffs if you make it anywhere far into the game Right, which Just, is which yeah. is which is the fun thing about all of these bluffs. The the pattern has emerged where none of them should be in final three. So why are they in final three? That's fair. I think gambler. I now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I think gambler. Now that I'm thinking about it, absolutely is one that makes it into final three. Uh, a bit more than you'd expect. Like, yeah, the gamblers a lot of the time will take three shots and then be like. Mm, no, I'm not doing anymore. I've confirmed three people. Um, so I think that's fine. I think it sort of has the a little bit of the chambermaid effect where uh, if you don't have a good read on what every person's role, like if somebody lies to you thinking you're not the gambler yep, and you think they're telling the truth and you say you gambled them, they're going to be like, Mm, sorry, buddy. Mm, I didn't think you were the gambler. I just wanted to see if you would die. And they're like, oh, cool. I'm dead now. Great. Yep. You don't really have much of defense unless somebody next to you is claiming tea lady or something. Um, or innkeeper then, protected you. Or, or innkeeper protect. That's yep. another good reason to go with innkeeper. You know what? Now I do think that it's an S tier minion. Yep. Um, I think that... Um, yeah, it's gonna, it does sort of walk a fine line of you have to hope that people are telling the truth uh, uh, when you say you're gambling them. Uh, but I, th I think it's honestly a really, like, it's a really good bluff uh, to make it into the end game uh, a lot of the times. Uh, and it's also another one that's, you know, fine to just die. 
Like if you die and say, well, I that person should have should have should have been something else, and they're like, oh well, darn, I guess I'll die now. Yeah. Yep. I think. Um, fine. I think it's a in terms of good. I think it's a fine bluff. I don't think gambler is really high priority for demon. Um, it's something that a, a demon or a minion will probably want to deal with at some point. But honestly, if the gambler dies on I mean, if the gambler dies because they gamble the demon incorrectly, then you're you're up shit creek. Um, the other sort of interesting thing that I have actually seen happen is the gambler gambling someone as a specific minion or as the demon and not dying. Uh, and in that case, that is very dangerous if you are evil. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You're suddenly everything sort of, you know, all of the information that you have been giving out uh, is called into question. All of your alliances, anything that you think it, that any sort of support you've lent to any other player. Uh, and so I do think as good, it's it's not bad. Um, it's an interesting way, especially if you are somewhat expendable, because if you are saying, you know, Hey, I'm the gambler. I gambled you as the tea lady. And the professor is like, well, I'm not the tea lady. So why are you alive? There's, there's not as big of an issue, you know, if you are the fool or the sailor, though, I don't know why you left gambler as sailor, but, uh, but there's, there's, there could be reason or, or maybe even like if you're the goon, um, especially if you're the evil goon. So I don't know. I I think it's 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 okay for good. I do think it's fine for evil, and I think it's something that even a demon could take to final three and still end up being okay if there are other sort of more suspicious, let's call it, targets out there for like why? But okay, the gambler's alive, but why are you alive? <laughs> like what? <laughs> How did this happen? Yeah. Um. So I don't know. I think I think this might be my first A. I don't think it's S. Yeah. I also do want to point out for both good and evil, it's great to just be like, oh, I'm the gambler. Should I gamble you as this and see yep. if they back down? Yep. Just well, great all around. Yep. Uh, for that. But yeah, I'm I'm th I'm actually thinking A. I think that a gambler's an A tier bluff. It's great. It's really versatile. If you find a die, it's great. If you're not to find a die, it's also great. Yep. Perfect. Good job. A little bit of a risk. Why it's called Gambler. Sure. It's good. Yeah. Let's talk about all the rumors happening around town now. Uh, so rumor has it that gossip is another role I don't really like, <laughs> to be honest. Um, <laughs> and it's such a shame. Yeah. Um, gossip... Uh, first off, this is another role that you really need specific things on your team. You like if you are a gossip in a zombie game, uh, no, don't do that. That's not a good idea. Um, probably if you're like a godfather and you have a godfather and assassin, maybe, but mm, mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, but it's great for Shabaloth to just claim kills, it's great for um so many things pretty good for Poe. um Poe can, po can it's, make it it's it yeah i mean i i think that poe is one of the like if you if there's a uh, only a little bit of kills one day and then a lot of kills the next day then people are going to think poe pretty easily but if you have like an assassin if you sink one of those kills perhaps or like put one on a, a gambler or mm -hmm. put one on a goon or something to hide uh, something while still getting an, an advantage out of it. I think is a really good Poe bluff as well. I think it's... But also, a lot of story... Th this is one of the most storyteller-dependent ones as well, mm. because a lot of storytellers will just kill the gossip on their like second or third gossip. Um, that's correct. Uh, and a lot of storytellers will do it super early, and a lot of super tellers, storytellers will do it super late. So uh, this one uh, depends a lot on your storyteller, I think, and knowing how your storyteller plays gossip as well. 
I think it also depends a little bit on like I I don't see I I don't think I would give gossip as a bluff to a Zambul partially because I would want a gossip in town possibly causing deaths like yeah. in a Zambul game you want to give at least a little bit of help to the Zambul and so like Godfather assassin great but having having a gossip occasionally guess correctly and being able to like you know throw out an additional death here or there having a tinker obviously having yeah. a gambler gambler obviously um but i i don't necessarily think it's horrible for zambul it it presents an interesting predicament but there the propensity for there or i guess i guess the it depends on how you as a player philosophize about gossiping um if your goal is to gossip truly every single day that's that would be dangerous for for a zambul gossip bluff but if your yeah. goal instead is to utilize the negative and realize that no one is dying when you said this then that means the opposite or something akin to the opposite is true without requiring the expenditure of one of the players. That's not a bad position to be in as, as a Zambul. Again, don't think I would ever give it because I would much rather have a gossip possibly killing people um, yeah. in order to mask the fact that it is a Zambul. But, uh, or, um, you know, being being the gossip or claiming gossip in a Zambul game as the Zambul and then dying, you're probably in pretty good position because then, yeah, well, I was the reason that there are no other deaths, so the Zambul is somewhere else. It's a interesting sort of opposite type thing. Yeah. Um, I do think it's S for Shab. Uh, yeah. I think it's probably, I, I honestly think it's probably C for Zumbul. I don't think it's D. I don't think it's F. If, yeah, but it, it, it really depends on your storyteller. Um, it depends on the storyteller. And, and your storyteller you, how giving, you play it. Yeah. yeah. And, and your storyteller giving the, giving other options. So like, I would expect there to be a godfather. I'd expect there to be an assassin. Um, I'd honestly expect there to be a lunatic who sees the Zambul token. And in this case, and in and this is one of those very few and far between cases where I would do that, um, I would expect the storyteller to tell the lunatic the exact two minions. Because I think the way that you navigate that game is by bluffing that the lunatic is actually the demon and you were just the gossip. And you yeah. carry that to to some sort of victory, um, but that's that's very hard, and and your minions won't necessarily know, uh, and that makes it even harder. We can talk about we can talk about the. Um, well, the sort of I, I'm very ready to talk about lunatic on BMR specifically. Right. Love it's it. a it's a role. It's it's a um, role. Um, where does where does gossip fall? B. I a? I'm thinking. B, I think that it's more uh, roles that you have on your team dependent than Gambler. Sure. But I think it's like almost, you can almost certainly bluff gossip if your storyteller does like, uh, depending on how you play it and depending on how your storyteller plays it, I think is the best part there. I think so too. Um, I also think, uh, and I didn't really cover this for good, um, in a weird sort of way, everyone bluffs gossip as good. Um, oh, yeah. If you are an expendable role, however, um, some people sort of get, like, silly with it. And I would definitely recommend, if you want to protect a gossip that you believe to be in play, um, gossip in earnest. You want, you want to put out the most damning gossip that you possibly can, because that will draw the ire of the demon. Um, a, a particularly damning gossip, demon is going to get rid of that as soon as they can, rather than let that let the gossip in any way have their information confirmed. 
And Which so, is another reason why you put gossip as a bluff to know that those damning gossips are just people trying to die. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and so the... Uh, I, I think it's a very powerful bluff for good, especially roles like the sailor, like if you are even actually the pacifist. Um, anything, anything that can somehow survive like an execution, uh, because there's not really, or not actually no, not pacifist, um, sailor or fool. Anything that can survive being attacked in the night, because being able to hide the gossip of them confirm some amount of information based on whether or not they kill someone uh and and sort of soaking that and and remaining alive yourself is incredibly powerful yeah uh and you know if you do gossip joke gossips every day then the second you start gossiping real gossips also whoops, true you're just the gossip also true i yeah. i have no idea how that's like yep but you know we'll see We'll see. Yep. Um, Portier. You know, I I did think I do think I said at the beginning of this that I had only one that I would even possibly consider putting in S tier, and that's this. Mm. Uh, I think that was not recorded when I said that, uh, but I'll pretend that I said it while we were recording. Great. Uh, this is the only one I think I would consider putting in S because there's a lot of liberties you can take um and i think it's like one of the least ones that you're gonna be like uh one of the ones you're least likely to question being in final three compared to say an exorcist or a chambermaid uh and the best part is you're not actually drunking the thing you're claiming you're drunking uh so you can say you drunk with like a da and there's a DA out there, and if you're believed, guess what? You don't got to double tap, because the DA is drunk at gamers. So, there you go. Now the person who was executed and didn't die is now super believed, and the cause of it is too. Yep. Uh, and it, it, as opposed to, um, let's check again, because that's just the meta. Yep. Uh, but there's so much more you can do with it. You can claim Cordier who drank with... A mastermind if there's a mastermind play and convince that people hey it's probably not a mastermind day it might be a minstrel day or something like that or uh you can claim you drank with uh it's the demon that is in play uh to push people off of that world for a little bit mm -hmm. uh like if it's people think it's a pucka game then you can say you drank with a pucka and oh no there's still kills i guess it must be a poe or something Who's hiding the fact it's a pucker. You could claim the demon that you are and sink kills for three days. I was about I to get to that. Seen. I was in that game that was uh, <laughs> skills. It was the pucka. Um, and six, like, bluffed courtier who drank with the pucka. Um, and... Uh, sank kills and you can do that with a different demon. You could yep. be the Poe who said, oh, I drank with a pucka and sink three kills in a row. Not like like hold the shot and then put three out, but just completely sink it and bam, yeah. it looks like a pucka game. And then even more like when you do that Poe charge and kill three people at the very end, like people aren't going to see it coming because it's just a pucka game and not a Poe game. Yep. This is, um, Miro. you can also just, if you want to get to the end of the game, you can just claim you miss shot, um, yep. and claim a thing, something that's not in play. Yeah. Yep. It's, Miro, Miro right. did it with a Shabaloth. That is a very, like, you have to clear that with your, like, it was, you have to clear that with very, your, it was very, I was like, what is going on? He was like, it's yeah. day eight in BMR. I was like, oh God. I'm the Shab. Yeah. What? It's day eight in a Shab game? <laughs> yeah, I'm bluffing Courtier. Fucking Miro. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, uh, I, I, I also think, um, yes, you can make it to the end, but um, whether or not you drink, like once, once a Courtier drinks with someone, if they've actually like used their power, they're no longer a threat. Like it's, it, it, it's no big deal. You don't necessarily have to die 
the demon the demon is not going to be in any haste to remove you and so like if the courtier if someone claims courtier and i you know especially if i can like actually discern that they are the courtier by some means or i've i've you know worked i've had a, a hush conversation where they've like confided in me and only me as the demon um i i absolutely am not going to worry about bringing them to the end of the game um very similar to you know if i'm playing sex and violets and someone comes to me and this has happened uh as the town crier like if both my minions are dead i don't care if you're alive like that's that's fine. You're getting no's from the rest of, for the rest of the game. I I'll, I'll bring you to final three. Like this is, um, and so I think there's there's also what makes this such a great bluff is even if you make it to final three, it's not that surprising. Like it's not it. This is one of those where it's like you aren't going to be looked at as a how did you get here, um. But you are going to have to be very careful about who you claim to have drunk with. Because if you claim wrong, then things are going to be suspicious. Yeah. I will also point out, um, other, unlike the grandmother, where after a certain amount of time, you are basically almost certainly useless. Although there's an argument that you're not useless as grandmother that I disagree with, but... <laughs> um, by the time Cordier drunkenness goes off, unless it's like a huge game and you claim to use it day one, like at that point, we're going after demon candidates. So yep. it doesn't matter how good of a role you are at that point yep. uh, in a lot of cases. So I, yeah, this is the only bluff here that you can convince me is S tier. Uh, and I would say yes, and I would actually put it in S tier. I, I, no, I agree. Even as you were talking about uh, it being an S tier, I just moved it up to S tier without even any. I, I, one hundred percent. This is, um, it's, it's an absolutely amazing bluff. There's a lot of things you can do with it. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily the greatest bluff is good. Um, it's okay. Uh, it's, it can be one of those things that can. Um, that a good player can use to sort of throw a demon or a minion off guard and uh, believe that, okay, maybe the courtier, you know, if it's if it's a shab and I say as the grandmother, oh yeah, I'm the courtier, I drank with the Poe last night. It's, it gives me license to like, I, it, it, it feels like I can just sort of go off and, and not have to worry about it unless somehow I want to buy into the idea that this is actually a courtier and sell a po world by doing some ridiculous double bluff and starting to sink kills um but it can it can put demons and minions sort of either on their guard or at ease if you know the the minion type that they drink with or the demon type that they drink with is not in play um i will also say drinking with the lunatic very fun um, if, if you want to make sure the lunatic knows they're the lunatic, if they somehow don't in a game of BMR, uh, having a courtier drink with the lunatic is a prime way to do that. I also, I, if, to be honest, if I'm going to, uh, drink with a good player, I'm either drinking with the tinker so that I don't have to worry about that over the lunatic, or I'm drinking with the minstrel because fuck minstrel. Stop, um, Guggy. <laughs> no, uh, but I will no, say, uh, if you edit that out, you're a coward. Um, <laughs> I will say, my I, I think it's a great good bluff because if you publicly claim, uh, "Hey, I'm the courtier. Last night I drank with this specific minion," that minion is less likely. A, that minion is less likely to do their thing. Uh, yep. Except for Godfather. Yep. Um, unless you do it day one as Godfather, which I think is incredibly funny, because then the Godfather will probably be like, are these actually the outsiders in play? Uh-oh. Um, and they probably won't bluff outsider in that case. But I think the other three are more useful. Um, and also, if that outsider is in play, the demon's coming after you. If yep. it's not, the demon probably won't. 
Yep. So being like something like a pacifist or a grandmother who just bluffs Cordier in public, drunking a minion, seeing if a demon is going to hit you to see if that minion is play behaviorally is a good idea too. Yep. Yep. Ooh, uh, we got a rough one. So when we uh, when we, we were talking about a lot of these, um, like I think just about any bluff we've talked about uh, throughout, like throughout all of TB, throughout all of this thing, you can pro you. There are ways to get through the game. Bluffing is any of those roles. I just had. I'm going to say it again because the other one's getting edited out. Uh, this one too. Um, probably shouldn't have said that because I'm. There's going to be a cut in the middle of my speech <laughs> now because it's getting edited up. Um, you can get away with any, uh, just about any bluff in uh, the game as the demon or even as a minion, and you can be believed if you play your cards right. Has anyone, anyone out there ever bluffed Professor and been even somewhat believed? There is how. How do you do it? I need to know. This is the Fist of F tiers. I cannot, like, yeah, sure, maybe a Shab game, maybe, in the right circumstance, possibly, you could bluff Professor, but also, if they died in the night, then you're just gonna look evil at the slightest hint of a Shab game. In fact, when it revives, any courtiers out there that haven't even used their ability is gonna be like, Hmm, I should probably drunk the Shab, because it might be a Shab game if there's been a revive. No, don't bluff Professor. Yeah, I it, think... No. I think Professor was created with... Uh, and Or not, not created with, but like one of the reasons that Professor exists on this script is as... In, intentionally, as, as a means for there to be like a a shab bluff or for people to believe um or or to to distrust uh any resurrection that happens um the problem is uh there is a meta around most clock tower communities where as a professor you don't resurrect someone who dies in the night you utilize your power as a sort of like reverse virgin um to bring back someone who is alive or who was who was executed. Um, so you bring back the grandmother who put themselves on the block day one as a means of showing, yes, the this person is good, I am good. Um, and especially if it's a grandmother, like that confirms another person. So suddenly you have this this beautiful trust circle. Perhaps the, to other people if the ST is wrong and gives the grandmother another grandchild. Also, yeah. Don't do that. Um, not good doesn't need the help at that point. In yeah. my mind. Uh, the um, the other thing that I will throw out there, because this has happened to me. Um, I played Professor. Uh, someone was executed. I was like, okay, I'm going to... It was Malachi, of course. Uh, selected Malachi that night. Woke up. Malachi remained dead. And I was like, oh... Oh, really now? Okay, gotcha. And then the sailor visited me and said, I drank with you last night. So, um, is it, <laughs> is it the Fist of F tiers? Yes, but there is, yeah. there is a world um, where if you are really crafty about it, you could bluff Professor as long as Sailor is also a bluff or you have somehow convinced a sailor or an innkeeper to protect you, etc. Um, where you can bluff a professor whose power was glitched because they were made drunk. It's so niche. And honestly, because of how, like, I don't want to say bad professor is. It's a great role. I would say bad, however, it's, Professor. It's, it's not, in terms of bluffs, I, it's just one of those roles that I don't, I think I try to actively avoid giving players as, as a bluff. Um, yeah. Unless, again, I'm giving them almost all of the drunkenness 
so that they can potentially sell a world where one person is in fact the professor who was made drunk on a night they tried to revive someone. Um, yeah, I in, don't don't give this as a bluff. Don't do it as a bluff. There needs uh, I I would love for there to be. Um, I don't know, just other roles out there or other evil roles that could somehow, like, make Professor make sense. Um, but the, right now, the meta, the meta just is not there. Actually, um, okay, wait. Alhad? No. Never no. mind. Because um, you would just pick, I think yeah. Al, a Professor goes after Alhad pick, so if you pick somebody in the Alhad, uh, why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's true. Yeah. Um, um, oh, your favorite role. Red <laughs> egg. Oh, sorry. I thought we were still talking no, about Professor. No, no. We're oh, done. We're, Minstrel. We're, we're done. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Minstrel. So, to successfully bluff a Minstrel Knight, the following things must happen. The gambler has to gamble correctly. The gossip has to gossip incorrectly. The execution the following day has to go in through. You have to sink any and all kills that you have. Your team has to sink any and all kills that you have. There's a lot of things that have to go in to successfully bluff one minstrel day. And there's usually, in a lot of games, two minions. Can you do it? Yeah. Do you have to f specifically frame people based on if it's a minstrel day or not? Kinda. Mm -hmm. Do you also have to sink a lot of kills sometimes in the anticipation that it might be something you can frame as a minstrel day and then it turns out not? Yeah, kind of. Is it possible? Yeah. Is it doable? Yeah. Is it great? No. Is minstrel great? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, I think that, again, this is a great mastermind bluff. Uh, if the situation, if it gives you, uh, again, if this is a great mastermind bluff, if very specifically the gambler doesn't die and the gossip doesn't gossip correctly and no other kills happen. Um, I think in that case, it's a great minstrel block. I think Exorcist is a little bit better because it's more targeted, but I think that minstrel is honestly more of a gamble than a lot of the roles that you have to gamble on to bluff correctly um i say that in gambler is not like a bluff you have to gamble on that much um weird um i think that yeah i my opinions on minstrel don't translate as hard in bluffs but it, yeah, just yeah, just kind of, just kind of sitting there. I think it, the the best uh, minstrel bluff you can do is if your team is doing poorly and you're dying and you're the demon and you're like, guys, I'm the minstrel. There hasn't been any minstrel nights. We need to focus on getting some other people dead because I yep. think three evils are alive. <laughs> yep. Um. I, otherwise, I, shrug. It's yeah. fine. Yeah, I um I do think that if I ever give Minstrel as a bluff to the demon, A, it's there's it's more so information of just like a hey, you don't have to worry so much about your minions dying. If if your minions want to play expen expendably, they can go ham. The other mm -hmm. thing that I will say that I will try to do is that like in the case that I give Minstrel as a bluff. If there is ever going to be like the setup of quote unquote a minstrel day, I would help evil out in that case. I would make the sailor drunk themselves um, that night, sort of no questions asked. Uh, I would do everything I can to, you know, make sure that like if an innkeeper protects the gossip somehow, make the gossip drunk in case they gossiped correctly. Um, there's only so much you can do, obviously, because so much of it is just sort of luck and random chance. Um, but in the case uh, that there, that evil had minstrel as a bluff, if the opportunity for a minstrel knight presented itself, 
I would do my best to give Evil the option of playing into that world. Um, obviously, it could still just be a Poe charge. There's there's lots of things that can happen when, when no deaths occur in the night. But yeah. with Minstrel specifically as a bluff, and with, with anything as a bluff, um, I think that's the other sort of thing I would like to cover with this guide or or this guide series is that bluffs are not something you should just determine haphazardly as a storyteller bluffs yeah. give your evil team information and can point to a sort of world that you are trying to help them you know not necessarily you're giving them all of the keys but you're giving them some a very strong start to constructing a false narrative which is exactly what evil needs to do in order to navigate to a victory. And so if you find yourself, and this actually, I mentioned this, I think while we were off, off like recording as well. Um, this is why like you can play the game with 15 players, but it's very, very hard to balance a 15 player game. It's sometimes even hard to balance a 12 player game. Um, and so, like, I, 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 at one point, I was running a, you know, we were just, I think we were on stream, and we had, like, eight or nine players, and someone sort of facetiously suggested BMR, and I was like, I will absolutely run an eight-player game of BMR. Like, don't, this, BMR was not made with 15 players in mind. BMR was made in a similar vein as TB, in a similar vein as Sex and Violets, with like mm -hmm. 7, 8, 9, maybe 10, 11. Um, and it works beautifully at that low. It seemed, it sounds scary because, you know, if there's a Poe, like, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, you can construct a game that is fair and balanced for all, all players. And the allotment of the the limit of the number of players allows for the more possibility of just bluffs even outside the three that you give to your evil team it allows for them to possibly create a world of their own doing without double bluffing someone whereas once you get to 12 and 15 players at 15 you are literally telling evil these are like the only three roles that aren't in the game good luck yeah uh yeah. fi figure it out um and it lends to be fair there's a little bit of a you know with with all of the roles in the game which people are telling the truth but i i think especially in bmr there's enough of ways to sort of prove that you are what you are um or or confirm others that it's it's just it's very hard um i don't think minstrel is the worst i'm not i don't even I think, think it's the worst. i don't think <laughs> you think it's worse than professor no uh, as a role i mean oh yeah no as as a role as a, i mean you're just mad it, that you didn't get to go boom as the boom dandy you're right <laughs> but also shut up <laughs> i i i as in a very serious note i think this is uh somewhere in c i think I, I i was about to say c2 i i don't think it's quite d um it's 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 okay and it again it it's powerful information um i don't know whether or not i i would think uh, uh i i do i will say this again if you are um any sort of uh any sort of role that can either be expendable or or sink a kill i think minstrel is a great bluff is good um, Minstrel is definitely one of the highest priority targets for evil because you just do not want to have to deal with Minstrel days. Um, uh, speaking of which, uh, the, uh, the one game of BMR that I played with, uh, missing pieces, we, uh, executed a minion day one. It was a Minstrel day. And then we executed the Zombul the following day. <laughs> Yep, that's a combination that I don't know why so, he's on a script it's together. So brutal. It's I do not like Minstrel. It was, yeah, that's fair. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's a solid scene. 
I think C I, is where it should be bluffed. I am yeah. so excited for this next one. I cannot wait to spill the tea about this role. I hate you. <laughs> um, so, as an evil player, just in general, not a, not just on BMR, uh, there's the the goal you are trying to achieve, for the most part, is to kill as many good players as possible. And what better way to kill as many good players as possible by getting them to be like, oh yeah, I'm fine to die if you're the tea lady. Great, perfect. And the bonus part is you can frame people as evil while doing it. Is it a good demon bluff? Probably not. Like if you're getting, this is I think behind, besides Innkeeper, the most, why are you in the final three bluff? Uh, but as a minion, oh baby, get those good players out of there. Um, so much. Yeah. Um, I, I honestly think uh, a lot of the times it's, a, uh, like people will do it with a DA. I disagree because like double taps exist, uh, which yeah. is a, is a thing. Is a, one of those reasons why I'm not a fan of BMR. But also just getting getting the uh, good team to not only like be fine with dying, but jumping on top of it just to prove like quote unquote prove three people at a time is great. Are you gonna die eventually, bluffing tea lady? Absolutely, hundred percent. Like if you make it to final three, claiming tea lady, no. Absolutely not. Yeah. But I think that it's probably one of my favorite just randomly like I'm a minion. I haven't talked to my demon today, so I don't know what the bluffs are. I'll bluff <laughs> tea lady. Yep. That sounds like a great idea. Um, I think it's I, I, I think you're probably on the same vein on me of that's a great like great minion bluff. Just oh, one hundred percent. I yeah, I think 100%. I think T Lady as a bluff gets ragged on so hard, and I I do not understand I... it for multiple reasons. One, um, you know that there is no T Lady in play. T Lady is a is an incredibly powerful character. Um, mm -hmm. It can lock down like, especially if you do do any sort of like double like taps or things like that. Um, it can absolutely lock down two people as being definitively good. Um, three like people. The, three people. Um, two other people, yes. Uh, but the the other thing that, yeah, like, when whenever I give T-Lady as a bluff and there's not a DA in play, players are always like, what? What is this? And it's like, no, like, there's, yeah, like, it's it's a popular bluff to link to a DA. Um, if... If I receive Tea Lady as a bluff and I am the DA, I am absolutely not claiming Tea Lady. I'm not. I'm not selling that yeah. world. That is for someone else, and like maybe I can help them by like you know if the Godfather takes it, I can like DA protect one of his neighbors that day, um, in order to sell. The they are the tea lady, but I, I do not want, my goal, especially as DA, is making it to the end. I don't want to have to try to prove myself in any way, shape, or form on the path leading to the end. Uh, so no, I, I love, I love tea lady as a bluff. I think it, I think it gives you a lot of powerful options. Um, you can, you can potentially sell a world where the reason that you didn't protect one of your neighbors again was because you were drunk that day. Um, if you are expendable, uh, especially something like a godfather, you can potentially even, if you execute uh, an outsider, kill yourself to suggest that like, oh yeah, the reason the execution went through yesterday was because I was pucka poisoned, see? Like, there's a lot that you can do, um, and this is just... It, I think it gets ragged on for all the wrong reasons as a bluff. Yeah, I I will say as bluffing tea lady, I actively will not DA protect my neighbors because yep. then if I if it is a double tap, then it's just going to look like, oh, you're the DA. Let's yep. get you out now. Yep. Um, I the only time I would consider 
DA protecting uh, a neighbor as the tea lady is if they're the fool. Um, the but then, why are you going after the fool and not the other person? One like maybe pacifist execute, like pacifist save there. But if you're pass, like I don't know, I don't know how I feel about pacifist saving next to a minion bluffing tea lady anyway. So, nah. Yeah, it's a. I I think it would have to depend on the role and and the the context, but um, but I, I I tend to agree. That's one of the things I probably would lean on not doing. Um, I do think as as good. I think T Lady is also a great bluff. I think T Lady is. Um, I mean, if if you can, if it's if it is one of the demon bluffs, obviously they're going to see through it. But if it is not a demon bluff, um, especially again. If you are expendable in any sort of way, um, like I think, even as like a gambler, I would be happily, I would happy, bleh, I would be happy bluffing tea lady just as a means of like trying to draw myself, trying to paint a target on myself. Um, tea lady again, if there, if it does exist, is incredibly powerful in the fact that you can definitively lock down three people is good or definitively like find out where evil is lurking um and so yeah it's i i don't know that it's like s for me in terms of town but it's it's definitely up there i i think this is a second a i i think there's also the inverse of sailor where if your neighbor is claiming sailor then you bluffing tea lady to make it not look like Yep. It's a sailor. Yep. Is also a good idea. I think it's better in the reverse sense. Yeah. But still, I. Do yeah. you think S or do you think A? I, the I think it's an S for a minion, but the problem is this has this is like the second most after the innkeeper. Where if you're in the final three, why? Yeah. yeah. This is how like i i think this is the best minion bluff uh, actually, uh just general no if maybe you're, if you're in final three that makes sense to a certain extent because the the players like innkeeper innkeeper is very different innkeeper definitely protects two people at night if the tea lady has ever sat next to an evil if you're in the final three yeah okay so you're sat next to an evil like there's yeah. there's a there's a rhyme and a reason to it that i can definitely see the question becomes, how did you get there while being seated next to, I guess, an evil for probably a good portion of the game? Because at some point, you just gotta be next to a good, like, or to two good people. Um, I would also argue that Tea Lady is uh, always a threat as opposed to Chambermaid being a lot of the times a threat because Chambermaid, you can bluff something that follows your wake pattern. Yeah. And then Tea Lady either it's sitting next to an evil, and that evil's fucked. Yep. Or yep. it's sitting next to two goods, and you gotta get rid of that as soon as humanly possible so you can take out the three confirmed people. Yep. So, Absolutely. yeah, it, that being in the final three is a huge red flag in a lot of situations. So I think it's at the best, potentially, uh, minion bluff, but if you're a pucka, if you're a shab, if you're a po, and you don't have a mastermind and you're bluffing tea lady Wh what yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah so i think uh i think on average i would say uh low a high b but i would lean towards a just because it's such a fun bluff i i definitely think i'm i'm not putting it lower than a it's it's yeah, either a i think or, so. it's either a or s for me and i'm i'm happy with a low a that's fine yeah um try not to pull your punches with this next one that one is the weakest so far. I'm not gonna lie. What are you talking um, about? That's a great one. That that's just like, oh, pacifist. Let me say, don't do violence. That's what a pacifist is. That's yes. not really a pun or anything. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, like you can. I don't know. Like, if you're a DA and you want to just protect a random good player that you think is going to die, or a demon that you think is, uh, or an evil player, and you say, oh, well, I was the pacifist, so that's why they randomly survived. Uh, great. Um, 
like if you even if you don't have a DA on your team, just saying you're the pacifist and being like, well, maybe one of the people that were saved earlier uh, was actually just a pacifist save. Uh, that's fine too. Uh, I think that pacifist depends a lot on the roles in play if you're doing that. Because if there's like no tea lady and no sailor, uh, question marks are going to be floating above people's heads. But I think it's great DA bluff. Fine bluff if you don't have a DA. Mm -hmm. um, but also it's an outsider. Um, it's not I an outsider. For the, for the record, I don't think it's an outsider. It's just so heavily ST dependent. It takes a really good ST to take pacifist and not make it an outsider. Um, like, I don't know. I think in a like in a, in a game in, in a script of uh, there's reasons why you would stay alive. Just there's a living pacifist is sort of like a weak reason, and I think that's why it makes such a great bluff for a DA. <laughs> yeah. No. True. Yeah. One hundred percent. I agree. Like I again, like even without a DA. Like, if people are saved, then you can be like, oh, well, they might be the pacifist, just so your other tea lady neighbor might not be good just because they're there. Yeah. But, like, that's kind of weak if it was a double tap. So, eh. That's why double tapping's bad. I don't like double tapping. Shame on the double tappers. Just b believe, believe, in the, believe in the heart of the cards. I mean, I think double tapping is required to a certain extent, especially yeah. if there is the threat of a possible DA. Like, DA is just such a powerful minion. Um, yep. Doesn't really seem like it all of the time, but uh, but there's there's a reason that you really want to root out that DA or that, that a courtier drinking with the DA is actually... Which is why courtier good. is a good buff! Yeah. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, pacifist. I, it's yeah. I think it's sort of it's sort of middling. It can definitely be. Um, I don't know. I think you covered. I think you covered the bases of it. Um, yeah. Is it? Uh, it's it's helpful for the purpose of knowing that like, as if you receive it as a bluff, knowing that any good person is going to be executed unless they specifically cannot die for some other reason. Um, and so if an execution doesn't go through and they're not DA protected, then they are either the sailor, the fool, the tea lady protected person. Um, and that can be a real help as, as demon um, to try to sort of figure out what's going on because like trying to kill a tea lady protected person and having them not die, uh, you don't necessarily know um, why they didn't die, and you can't exactly go out and start asking people why why they didn't die when you attacked them. Um, so uh, I I don't think it's um, I also don't. Uh, this is one of those ones where if it made it to final three, I wouldn't really be bothered. In a weird way, um, I I wouldn't be like the pacifist made it to final three. What's going on? Um, and therefore, I think it's actually a, a safer uh, demon bluff, potentially. The problem is people like to test pacifists. Um, and so yeah. it's that that is the danger. Um, though if you're Zambul, maybe it's perfect. Yep. Um, I think C. C? What do you think? B? I... I... I think this actually, like, if you have a DA who is doing a good job, this is, like, any, like, anyone on your team bluffing pacifist could be, like, really, really good. I, I would, I think lowest I'm willing to go is B, frankly, because as, like, as much as a lot of people like to say it's a bad roll, it's a great bluff, uh, just straight up. I, I, I think at least, like, I think... Uh, attacking pacifists is fine uh, and does kind of break the role, but otherwise it's just amazing. And I, I, I would honestly say potentially, like A, if you have a DA on your team. What if you don't so, have a DA on your team? 
If you don't have a DA on your team, then I think it's C, which is why I'm thinking B. Okay. To average it out. I'm I'm happy with B. Yeah. That's fine. B or C. I um I think it's a little bit a little bit too limiting. Um yeah. speaking of the best DA bluff. Yep. You're as the fool, you get to not die once. Yep. Great. It doesn't really do all that much, but like you're I mean, it's it, like unlike the soldier just kind of sitting there, there's not a lot of roles in the script that immediately point people out. So just uh, just sitting there is honestly like pretty good a lot of the times mm -hmm. because you're not actively doing the wrong thing a lot of the times, if that makes sense, I think maybe. Yep. Question mark. If you manage to get executed the night a DA hits you, and even if not, if it's like far enough into the game, like you are great. Now you're just a thing with no ability. But also, you're probably not going to get attacked because you have no ability. So it makes sense that you would be in the final, like, three. I, we say final three, but also there's plenty of times where you don't have a final three in BMR. That's because very of true. BMR. Yeah. Like, every other script has the final three, not this one. Um, I think that, um, like, even without a DA, I think this is a pretty fine bluff for, like a minion to be coming out like three or four days in and like i am the fool i've been in the game for a while i want to see if anyone's attacked me and then just waste an execution if you know there's not a minstrel um because wasting executions is great it's amazing um as a minion specifically not as yes. the good team or a demon uh actually well, except Zumble, Zumble. you could get it Zumble except it's not also, if there's a mastermind in play, yep. but I, I think Fool, uh, unlike the soldier getting a bad rap because it's kind of sitting there, I think Fool is great because you're just kind of sitting there. Um, and I I think it's just a great, if you don't feel like, like actively, if you want to sort of take a background to the game, and just sit back, watch other people focus on each other. Fool's just not gonna get noticed a lot, uh, which is unlike real life, because I am a fool and I am noticed all the time for my <laughs> foolishness. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I, I think this is my preferred DA bluff um, because the I, ideally as a fool, like I, I think I'm willing to be tested during an execution, but if I survive, I think I'm much more inclined to protest, like, Xing me again, uh, because I've already been tested. I I've already been tried. So now, now what we should be doing is forcing the demon to waste a kill to try to kill me again. Um, and to me, that that is what makes it better than claiming to be a, a sailor. Claiming to be, uh, I don't know, d uh, tea lady protected. Claiming to be a pacifist. Um, there's, you will certainly die the second time. And that follows the sort of ability of the DA. Uh, but if you can convince enough people that you actually are just the fool, it's a great, it's a great role to hide behind. Um, yeah. as, as DA, uh, as good, it's, it's all right. It's sort of one of the, um, it's one of the roles you can sort of hide behind if you're a more powerful role as a, like, you know, sort of come after me, but you're not going to be able to, you're going to have to like push hard for me to die. If you really actually want me to die at night, uh, the, um, of course, if there's an assassin, well, there you are. Um, but, um, but I do think it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think it's, um, I don't think it's quite the level of courtier, but I do think it's, it's one of the better bluffs on here. Um, partially because you just get to, all you're doing, all you're claiming to do at least, is just sitting, just sitting there. there. 
is just sitting there. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's also one of the most fun roles to resurrect. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so like good. other, like so Sailor good. and Tea Lady is a maybe. Fool is a yes. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I need to find the Wasn't game. Wasn't that on one of your, where like, Ghost was Ghost, the revived Ghost one? died five times. Uh, or, no, right. or didn't have, or didn't die five times, but had five lives over the course because he was DA protected and executed. Then he was attacked. Then he died. Then he was resurrected. Um, I can't remember if Evil won that game. I think Evil actually ended up winning that game. Uh, I yeah, think final I three to... was two evils and ghosts. Yep. Yep. I don't remember who was executed. I wasn't in that game because, you know, I don't play BMR that much, which says a lot about this tier list. Fair. Um, Fair. <laughs> but I was watching. So, yeah, I think it, I, I don't know. It was close game, surprisingly, for a <laughs> fool that had five lives. Yeah. 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 Um, low A, high B? I I think so. I think that um I I think that's uh the only reason I don't want to put it in A is uh, no. I think I'm down to put it in A actually if you're down to put it in A. I think I'm down for A. I yeah. I I like it just as as anything, honestly. As yeah. anything. You could you could bluff fool as the demon with a DA. And you may can do it without a DA sometimes. You can also do it without a DA. That's true. Um, And I think it's a little bit more believed than um, than sailor. Like, I I want to execute a sailor to see if you know to to sort of prove a thing. Executing a fool doesn't really do anything um, aside of prove that they have been attacked, which maybe is is important if there's you know a couple of nights without much death going on um but but other than that i yeah fool fool is one of those roles that like i think i wouldn't be shocked if it made it towards the end of the game yeah i don't have a good one for this one goon yeah you haven't had a good one in a while uh goon is I don't think Goon's really something you should be bluffing a lot of the times because Goon will probably be bluffing something else because it can be evil. But obviously going into outsider bluffs, there's always the loom of you shouldn't execute me because the Godfather is still alive Mm -hmm. Um, or could still be alive, Mm -hmm. which especially if you're bluffing uh, an outsider, that means there's if there's uh, two base outsiders and there's no godfather in the game, suddenly it looks like there's three. And whoa, that means that either one of the outsiders is lying or it's a godfather game. Yep. And that makes it uh, do we kill into the outsiders, do we not uh, sort of dynamic. Uh, yep. And that's for all of these. But also, yeah, goon is something that if you claim either you're going you're probably going to either die immediately yep uh or if people are thinking it's a godfather game you're gonna start soaking up a lot of the early good abilities so you might take the sailor drunkenness you might take an innkeeper protection um probably aren't going to take chambermaid which is even better but if the chambermaid does pick you that can explain some stuff Um, a lot of the roles that can pick somebody might pick you just because you've claimed a goon and they go before like a demon. So I think this is actually a pretty good, uh, like something that isn't going to get a lot of use, like an assassin who's already used it just to soak up drunkenness. Um, either that or die. You can never really tell when you come out as a goon, um, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, really, I don't think goons coming out are believed anyway, because it's the goon. You're gonna, you might turn evil. Yep. Shut up. Yep. But I, I think that, um, I think that it's a very uh, good bluff for specifically soaking up 
um, a lot of the abilities of early players, which can be good in some situations and can be bad in some situations. Yep. So. Yeah, I one I one hundred percent agree. I um, I don't think this is a role that I would necessarily reach for in terms of being, you know, being sort of like actively loud about. Um, I do think it helps sell. You know, um, if you find out that you have a godfather, well, the godfather is going to tell you all the outsiders anyway. But if you know that there's no goon in play um, as the demon, you obviously know there's a lunatic in play. Alternatively, and I haven't seen this done nearly as much as I would like to, um, I and and maybe we can talk about this when we get to Godfather. Um, Godfather minus one is very powerful mm -hmm. because it opens the door for so many bluffs. You know exactly what outsider is in play. You know what the base is, and you can make it look like it's not a Godfather game. Um, yep. which is incredible. Uh, but, um, but I, I also don't know in BMR that I'd ever give Goonies. Um, I guess maybe as, as the third outsider, but I think the more fair thing to do is to just put a Goon in the game. Unless there's, unless you're giving your evil team no way of really easily turning the Goon without, you know, risking, uh, without taking a big risk um yeah i, I also do think that goon is an, uh one of the bluffs that like if you're in a double claim then you can just back down to be like oh i'm just a goon yeah if you want to kill me go for it and then just end there and then it makes sense yeah so um and it does at least make you like i if i am ever playing the goon i tend to be on the quieter side whereas um, yeah, so I, it's, it's a weird one. It's a weird one to navigate. I, I don't think, I don't think if you are going to play and bluff as goon, um, being loud about it is usually just not the way to go because I don't think it'll, it'll be believed. Um, though, if you're, again, and I know I've said this, like, I don't know, five or six times now, um, if you are something of an expendable role, claiming to be the goon to see if evil does try to target you in some way at night, um, whether they kill you, uh, to soak a DA protection actually can be really interesting. Um, yeah. like, there, therein, therein lies the power. Um, cause evil will ass assuredly, if they are not certain that a goon is in play, or if they are certain that a goon is in play, um, we'll be trying to look for that goon. Um, and either, you know, assassin kill just to get a fourth confirmed evil guaranteed, or, you know, DA, uh, maybe, maybe Pucka will sink a kill, or Shab will, you know, select one target and then the goon. Um, but that's, that it's, it's a role that is meant to be fought over, in a way. Um, and, and that actually, rolling into uh, bluffing goon is good, Raw, not not the best idea, not the worst idea. Um, if you bluff goon, uh, any sailor is probably going to try to be drinking with you each night. Um, any innkeeper is probably going to be trying to select you. Like, like the sailor, the exorcist, the innkeeper, that I would actually argue is the prime target. If you can lock down a goon as sailor, exorcist, or innkeeper, like, you're doing your job. You don't need to worry about anything else. Um, just keeping someone as good is is incredibly powerful. Um, on scripts that feature a goon and a snake charmer, snake charmer is also a prime, like, it's, it's a great way to make sure that someone stays good and also make sure that you do not accidentally become the demon. Um, yep. So, I don't know. I, I think goon might very well be D. I do want to add for bluffing is good mm. uh, because it's my specialty. It's uh, playing out at evil is good and miraculously it works. Um, there is uh, ways to do that because if you do believe you were assassin killed mm. claiming and you died that night, like if an innkeeper claims they protected you or if you are sending to a tea lady, then you being like, 
I am the goon. I am evil. I would like to find my evil team mm. so I know who to vote for in the final three. Yep. If you believe you are Assassin Guild, that is very powerful. Yeah. Um, of course, it's not very believable after the fact because you just said in the middle of town, I am the goon. I am evil. I would like to know. <laughs> but if you can play your cards right, you can just end the game then. Yep. So very similar to yeah. uh, to the type of traveler player that I hate seeing, uh, which is going around saying, hey, demon. Um but you know, sometimes yeah, it works. I, I don't know. I, and, I don't know about that. That's and, pretty fine. And sometimes, uh, sometimes the storyteller makes that traveler evil after they find the demon, and it's great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, are you, by any chance, referring to a specific game? Because I, I can't. No, no games come to mind for me. Not at all. Certainly not one that's definitely going to be on YouTube later. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. That's on YouTube later. Uh, yeah. I. Um. What do you think? In terms of rating. I'm, again, it's not really something that's usually claimed. I think it's a fun minion claim. Um, and of course, m me specialty being outed evil as good and it miraculously working is going to say this is... Uh, it's also very fun. Uh, so I'm thinking low C, somewhere in C, mid to low C. I'm, I'm down. I'm down for low C. I, I, I think it's m closer to D. I think it's very niche. Um... And like, and it can be fun, but I, um, but I'm happy with C. Let's see. Oh, and the best one. The the role that I have still, I don't think I've yet to have been this role, and it's really bothering me. I'll keep that in mind uh, for later. Um, this is this is a great bluff. Um, this is a great to have on the script in a lot of scripts. Uh. But why is it on this script exactly? I don't know. Like, it feels like it needs a magician or a poppy grower a lot of the times. Uh, I think it's, Lunatic is a great bluff, like mid game, if you're in a pinch, to be like, oh, I was lying the whole time, but I think I'm the Lunatic. Um, but you can't really do that on BMR because you should probably be figuring it out, like, by the end like the end of day one a lot of the time like maybe day two you can get away with outing lunatic halfway through and be like oh my minion just didn't claim minion to me drug i think it's a fine like if you're gonna bluff lunatic on bmr specifically you kind of have to stick with lunatic uh on the first day as opposed to a lot of other scripts where it's great to just back into later but i still think it's really fun you're it's another one like fool where you're just kind of sitting there once you figured out you're the lunatic but also it has the loom instead of the looming hey if you execute me i'm probably not going to die because i'm the fool it has the looming hey bitch i'm an outsider if you want the Godfather to get a kill, kill me. Otherwise, I'm just gonna sit here and keep pretending to be the demon, apparently. Um, I think it's fun. Uh, it's, I think fools, it's like a worse fool in the sense of it's just kind of sitting there. But it's still like fine to just be claiming. So, eh. I mostly agree. I think on, uh, on almost any script, a side of BMR um, with a magician or with a poppy grower, lunatic is a little bit more of a thing that you can, you you just have more options to make the lunatic actually believe that they are the demon. Um, on BMR, the only way that you do that is by giving the lunatic either both minions as their minions or the min uh, one minion and a demon, and the demon, I should say, as their minions. Um, and the limiting factor, and, and this is sort of like there's a, a sort of bootlegger edition of the lunatic um, that I have seen people run with, um, where if you are the lunatic's minions and you are a minion or a demon, you will know that going into day one because that is the only way that you can safely navigate 
around that sort of that sort of thing. Um, marionette actually also really works well. Um, just having a marionette on the script uh, allows for you to go to a lunatic and say, "Hey, by the way, this person is the marionette, and this person, this actual minion, is a minion." Um, but Same with Spy and Widow, I think, because yep. knowing who the minion, having the evil team know who the minions are, is very powerful too. Yep, yep. Mm. Um, but the uh, again, the dilemma becomes that even with a spy, there's no way to convey to your evil team who the lunatic has seen as their evil team, um, and that just makes it harder to to sort of sell. Um, with with a magician, doesn't matter. You're showing an extra one. You can like create an illusion that you know two good people are actually your minions, but they're just you know they're trying to be dodgy or whatever. Um, and that I think comes with like who you choose comes with like who you believe is going to present in a way such that m they might believably actually be minions in a magician or a poppy grower game. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, otherwise I do, I, I think you're right. I think this is a, if, if you are claiming lunatic, you are sort of going hard into claiming the demon, um, and, and specifically the lunatic. And then you can navigate the rest of the game trying to, you know, suggest that, oh, hey, I selected this person at night, but that person died. So maybe we need to execute this person because they could be evil. Uh oh. Um, so I don't know. I think it's I think it's a fine bluff, um, and and as good. Uh, don't do it. The demon will know. <laughs> yeah. The demon knows you're not the lunatic. There's n there's absolutely no point. Like this is F rated for for good, one hundred percent. There is the very very niche thing you can do where you can go up to someone like day one conversation one or two and be like. I'm the demon. Are you a minion or am I the lunatic? And see if they play along. But like, again, like, yeah. there's no way to tell if, like, they're yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you could do that and and sort of hope you hit a minion. But the general meta surrounding a lunatic, especially in BMR, is usually you just you out them because again, BMR just doesn't really have the support that a lunatic needs to allow for them to believe they're a demon for a, for a good long time. Um, outside of, again, the very niche scenario where you literally tell the lunatic two members of the evil team, which is so risky. Um, and so like, I, I, yeah, it's... Why is lunatic on this script? Why, why is lunatic why? on this script? Um, I don't know. I like. I think for the purpose of bluffing, lunatic. I think that's that's where the lunatic gets its power on this script. Um, yeah. If you are, you know, if you claim lunatic who saw, even if you claim like lunatic who saw the shab token and you're executed, but you're actually the zambul. Like there's, that would be a hard world to sell. Actually, um, maybe lunatic that saw the pucka token, but you're actually a zambul. Um, so there's there's things you can do, but it's not it's not the greatest. I actually think it also can work well as a minion bluff, just because it suggests yeah. like a certain number of outsiders are in play, and therefore if there are other people claiming outsiders, suddenly those people look like the Godfather, uh, or or some other some other evil but i don't know um i think it's okay i don't think i'd go higher than c i would say I mean, low b high c because it's kind of like full and just sitting there in a way but i, guess I think I'm, for low I'm b. I, I if you if you want a c though i'm very happy with high c though i think i think all i think high c is absolutely acceptable um yep. We we already covered though uh, the high C role, which is of course the the sailor, because they love the high C. Um, Cradies, I'm not laughing at any of your jokes today. Okay, that's cool. That's not gonna happen. Awesome, great. I'm so sorry. Okay. 
Um, uh, let me let me just uh, fiddle with them a little bit, uh, tinker with them, you might say. You know, that would have been great if you started with fiddle and we were talking about the fiddler, uh, because that is a role, uh, and is so is role. tinker. Um, yeah, like, I think tinker in Final 3 is very funny, frankly. Because it's a role all about just dying randomly, and it's it doesn't die. But I feel like Tinker could survive. This is if you're in a game that I'm storytelling of BMR for some ungodly reason. I think Tinker surviving is way more outsidery than Tinker dying a lot of the times, because it's like. Why in the world have I not died? And it's like, everyone else is like, why in the world has the Tinker not died? And they kill the Tinker. Um, because the Tinker almost certainly is going to die. Um, but it, yeah, I, I think that Tinker is very, it's a funny bluff. Uh, in a way. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, if you want to, like, if you're a role that kind of wants to just die in the night, like, if you're, like, an assassin who used to kill as my... Which I've used every time I say useless role. Uh, you can even use the kill on yourself, to be fair. But if you want to just look like a... Just look like you've died randomly. Yeah. Uh, then, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think Tinker... Like the other two outsider bluffs, we've kind is kind of like their main thing is oh, there's a there could be a godfather in play. Don't kill me right now. But I think this is the one that I think a lot of people are just going to kill because we don't want to tinker to survive until final three because it's the tinker, and it sh if it survives to final three, maybe the st kills them, which they should never do that for the record. Yeah, but. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I agree. I think it's um I definitely will lean on uh and there was actually a game that Tinker survived until final 4 and Town got very very worried because they were like, so this is our final day. If we go to bed, the Tinker's just going to die and we're going to be at 2 and then we lose. Um and I don't necessarily think I'd be quite that evil with the Tinker. Um, but, but I do find Tinker's not dying very, very fun. Um, and, and maybe even more sort of outsidery. Uh, I do think that it's a pretty good, um, it's a pretty good bluff to have around, especially if you are maybe Godfather, um, or like Zambul. Uh, Godfather, if once... Once all of the um, outsiders have actually been killed, once you've once you've sort of done things, um, it can be a nice way to sort of go out with a bang. Um, but uh, but yeah, I don't know. I I'm I'm pretty happy with it. It's uh, it's very it's always very interesting, um, especially if you are going for a bluff. As a non zombul demon, I'm not sure I'd try to hide behind Tinker. Um, no. <laughs> like, be just, it's just a bad idea. Um, but I do think that uh, because of the possibility of a godfather, that it's not always going to be something that you're going to want to necessarily execute. Um, yeah. I... <sighs> I think, uh, specifically strategy-wise, I think Tinker is the most fun of the four outsiders, but I think Tinker is kind of the worst of the four outsiders because it's the first to go on the chopping block because having a Tinker alive could sort of hide, like, a Mastermind Day or something yeah. like that. So you kind of... I think besides Grandmother, Tinker is... Like, even with the Godfather kill, I think killing the Tinker is one of the first people you want to kill if you don't have any science targets. So, it's it's a roll. Yep. Um, mm. In terms of bluffs, I think it's, I think it's C, I think it's C or B. I, th I, I think that 
it, specifically because fun, I want to put Tinker higher, but I think C or B is potentially where I want it to be. I think high B then. High B. That's a stretch, but I'll down, I'm down to put it in anywhere in B. But high B? I, I mean, know. you wanted you wanted it higher than B, right? No, I didn't. No. I I said I said uh I like because of either fun. low B or high C. Okay, okay. I think that's what I said. I might have said something different. Like uh, I don't know. This is recorded, so you can probably make a fool out of me by cutting back to me saying something like that, but it's I didn't fair. mean it, so it's fine. It's um I you see you say that Tinker is the best outsider. I think this is the best outsider. Uh I think Tinker is the most fun outsider. I, I think Moonchild is the most fun. Moonchild or Goon, honestly. Um But yeah. I don't know. That's just me. Um Moonchild Speaking of Moonchild I think um, this is another one to sort of hide a mastermind day because it just points direct. Like if you are a demon and you have a mastermind, just bluff Moonchild. Mm -hmm. And if somebody has the courage to be like, I think you're better than having a godfather kill, just pointing directly at someone and be like, that person is definitely good and they should die because they're good. And them not being the, dead the next day makes them distracts them from the mastermind day. Yep. Uh, so amazing thing right there. But honestly, anyone bluffing Moon, I think Moon's Child is the best bluff. Uh, just because if you die, you're immediately pointing at somebody and saying that person will probably be executed tomorrow unless they die tonight. Um, yep. Which is great. It's great. It's yep. amazing. It does require you to die to get the uh, benefit of that person is the next execution, yada, yada, yada. But, like, if you're something that's going to die anyway because you have a lot of suspicion on you, bluff Moonchild. Just, yep. it's great. It's the best one. Yeah, I, I think that uh, I love Moonchild. It's great. At, at S tier in my heart. I, it's not going to be S tier. I can tell you that. But it's S tier in my heart. I um yeah. I I think it's not S tier if only because in in my heart because uh it's not great to bluff Boonchild as good. It's it's probably the thing you don't want to be doing unless you have specifically like some sort of evil ping on someone in which case you can you know in the case of a godfather well actually a godfather will find out very quickly if you are the Moonchild. Um in the case uh, where there isn't a godfather, hiding, like, getting that information out, um, if you're going to be executed anyway, might as well go out with a bang. Um, I think it's one of the most fun rules to be, but I also think, you know, there's a reason that Wedge McCloud made a script entitled 16 Townsfolk, uh, wherein all of the outsiders essentially were the, the very powerful ones. So Golem, Moonchild. Um, the ones that just affect the game so strongly uh, that in many, in many scenarios, they are actually far more townsfolk or far more beneficial to good than they are uh, detrimental to good. Um, and so like uh, here, Moonchild, um, I think it also opens up the very interesting and very niche world wherein, um, and this is, like uh, sort of a going out with a bang type thing, but you could do it, uh, where if a minion is being executed, provided there's no minstrel, um, then, or maybe you are the Zambul and you're being executed, you claim Moonchild, uh, have whatever other minion you have, actually, you point at the minion, you have them kill themselves at night, uh, and then it makes it look like you are actually the thing you claimed to be, and this other person is also good. Um, which is so much of how you sort of navigate the... I, I think in BMR, um, it's definitely possible to end up with like a final three of all evils. Uh, but it's so much more likely, even 
in BMR than in like TB or SNV that you're going to lose allies along the way. Mm -hmm. um, and so being willing to do that uh, in order to keep up this facade of good is just is so essential. And so um, I'm, I'm down for A. Uh, I'm yeah. honestly, I'm honestly sort of, I, I think this could also be an, an S for evil. Um, maybe not actually. I just described how, how limiting it was. And Courtier is definitely not limiting. Oh yeah, the Courtier is the, the best. Don't touch Courtier. Oh, honestly, it need, needs Courtier. a one above. Yeah, yeah, it belongs there. I, I will also add, for bluffing is good with Moonchild, I think that I, I, I personally think that, um, like I, someone brought it up to me a while ago, I forget who it was, um, and I was like, yeah, why don't we do that? We g bluff gossip all the time. Why do we not bluff Moonchild, like, at every single kill? Because then, like, you don't know if somebody is the real Moonchild and you have to be concerned, or if they're bluffing Moonchild for the sake of, they can just do it for free. Yep. Um, I think that also, like, if you're dying and you're bluffing Moonchild, just seeing how the person reacts is... Like, this is a script about behavioral stuff more than anything and seeing how people react is uh basically the whole thing yep. so just randomly just saying after you've died oh i'm the moon child i'm gonna pick this random person seeing how they react is always um pretty good i think yeah no i agree also it means the demon won't kill them so do it to somebody if they know that uh you're bluffing it and they, you want them to live another day yep I'm down to put A, I think. I think I think I'm down for A. Yep. Yeah. That that way we have we have uh, an outsider in each of A, B, and C at least as well, and I I kind of like that. Yeah, I agree. Um, so minions and selling and selling what type of minions are in play? Godfather. I think personally opposed to TB, I think it's harder to sell. Because uh, it's usually just uh, a lot of the selling of the evil worlds comes from what's in play at the time. Yep. Like, you can sell a, a, a zombie world way more easily if there isn't a lot of people who sell kills. Um, Godfather is by far the easiest. Yeah. Because you just bluff an outsider, yep. and that's it. Yep. Um, and bam, there's one more outsider than there should be, which is how Godfather kind of works. Um, yeah, it's like, I don't know. It's just you get to bluff outsider, um, and it looks less like the other minions that are in play, but yeah. I think a bluffing Godfather game is basically the same as taking an outsider bluff. Uh, so it's about as much value as the outsider you're taking. Yeah, I think um, I think it also can help, you know, in the instances where you are claiming to be lunatic, um, suggesting that you are the lunatic and therefore this is a Godfather game. Also, maybe buys you a little bit of safety uh, because suddenly you won't really want to necessarily execute into the outsiders. Um, or you execute into the outsiders earlier, uh, and you know if you're lucky enough to have, let's say, a Shabaloth, um, you can sort of purport that it's like, okay, the Godfather has been killing, so we need to not execute any more outsiders, please, okay, thanks, uh, and just sort of ride ride the tide to victory. Um, but I do agree. I think uh, of all the minions on here, um, Godfather is definitely the easiest. Sort of world to to set up and sell um so yeah yeah uh as good don't do it um yeah uh, you're saying this to the master of outing evil is good and true. it working it's very true uh, uh da da i think is much better to bluff is not in play than bluff is in play like the benefit yep. of having a da in play is just throwing suspicion on the people who um aren't dying yep but like uh 
Like they're like going after the fool and killing them fully and going after the pacifist. That's pretty good overall, but like at the end of the day, I, I would rather have a DA in play and bluff it's not in play than not have a DA in play and bluff it is in play. Agreed. Yeah. Um I also like, think I, yeah. it's so easy to test whether or not uh like you can you can accuse a tea lady, an actual tea lady, of being the DA, but that tea lady is probably just going to prove themselves by like forcing a double tap on one of the neighbors and that's not something that anyone but the tea lady can do outside of there being a pacifist in the game um but then you're just getting into like really messy head spaces uh and the yeah. easiest the easiest answer is that the tea lady is just the tea lady um and they're probably gonna die unless there's also an innkeeper in play in which case maybe they'll be drunk uh because that would really sort of be the only fair thing to do at that point but i agree yeah. yes uh having a da and bluffing not a da in play um bluffing that there's any other minion in play is uh just one of the most probably the most powerful thing you can do on this script because if you can keep a da alive until final three you probably are going to win this game as you yeah. um it's it does require a little bit of coordination depending on the demon depending on the kills all that but uh but yeah da i think is probably the most i think i would say that it's the most powerful outsider on the script or outsider minion on this script i think um, so yeah so in turn so how do we rate this uh i think it's like c because it throws suspicion on like the uh, people who are surviving execution, but like again, you, I would rather bluff that there's not a DA in play when I have a DA than the vice versa. Yeah, like it's just eh. Like we kill the fool. Yep. Okay. Cool. There you go. Which you're probably going to be killing anyway at some point potentially. Yeah. If you want to kill people, kill them yourself. You have the power. Unless you're the zombie, then fuck you. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, assassin. assassin so this is more of this is uh the thing i would use to bluff having um the assassin instead of having something else yeah. so if it was a godfather uh if it was a godfather um uh like if it was a godfather it was a da on my team i was the godfather i would consider bluffing fool and having the demon kill me day one being like okay so it's either a pucka or the assassin killed me because i was claiming something powerful the day before or something like that yep um and that means okay so either it, there's no da in play or one of these outsiders isn't telling the truth mm -hmm. which especially if there's not godfather kills can be very powerful so I think Assassin is potentially one of the best ones to just bluff us in play because then Lamau, one of the other bluffs aren't in play. Right. Sorry, one of the other minions aren't in play. Others. Yep. Yeah. But yeah. like when you bluff an, an Assassin is in play, then you're bluffing that a useless role is currently alive a lot of the time. So eh. Fine. You're also, you're also giving a good amount of credence to, you know, uh, in in the cases that you sort of brought up where you know you're you're claiming fool or you're claiming sailor or you're claiming something that normally would have a better chance of surviving during the night um even goon uh like claiming to be the evil goon and suggesting that there's you know clearly an assassin out there because no one else is claiming to have chosen you earlier in the night and you turned evil um really powerful uh so yeah no i i definitely agree i think um i guess i guess uh assassin is our s ranked minion world um either either that or high a i suppose but um, i i would say because a lot of the times it's hard to specifically bluff assassin is in play and not like you were the person chosen by the pucka last night you think a then yeah i think a okay Godfather and Assassin can, can sit and ice and yeah. time Um. Oh, Mastermind. Uh, just saying that 
Like if there weren't a lot of kills last night, you want to just uh, waste an execution? Just say, Lamau, that feels, this feels like a mastermind day. Let's make sure. And a lot of the times people will be, be like, lol, sure. That sounds like a great idea. Yep. A, a lot of the time, like it, like people don't execute for mastermind days a lot, but, and I feel like people would more likely kill somebody on the team of the person who was executed last a lot of yep. worlds, which a lot of the worlds is an evil player. Yep. But if a lot of people are building worlds with that person as the demon and two other good players as minions, then that's a really good time to be like, I think it's a mastermind day or something like that. And yep. Just taking away a kill to waste like an execution and then come back with like multiple kills. Mastermind is one of those minions that um, like in defense of it, I have said before and I will continue to say it again. Uh, it does a lot of work just by being on a script. Mm -hmm. um, throwing that same same sort of like with Legion. Like, just just putting it on the script. You could never run a Legion game with a script that has Legion and three other demons on it. Uh, but there will always be this, this, just this anxiety generated by the fact that it's like, okay, but are these people telling me the, the truth? Or, or are they even like bluffing friendly or are they all trying to get me killed um and and mastermind is very much similar in that vein where it's like if even if deaths happen in the night uh you need to consider whether or not there's a mastermind in play and that death was because of an assassin or a tinker popping or a gossip um and if you execute good you're just done. Um, the I I do think Mastermind gets weaker and weaker as the game goes on, uh, because it's going to sort of dwindle down, especially if you execute on final five and no one else dies. Uh, it's pretty clearly a Mastermind day at that point. Um, or a Poe charge. Or a Poe charge. Or a Poe charge. That's true. Um, and so things get uh, things get dicey. If you can if you can confirm that there's definitely not a Poe in the game though, there's um, but yeah, no, you're right. Um so in in terms of um, like bluffing whether or not it's in play, I, I think it's probably rated higher than D. Um but again I, I I, I would rate just... it at I personally have put it in B because yep. it's uh like if you think if you spread around that it's mastermind day and people believe you people will probably go either for the double tap on the person who just died or they're going to go after evil candidates which could be actual evil players a lot of the time so yep. eh, sort of a toss up but yeah. I think it's fine. Yeah, I agree. Do we? We didn't really do it with TB because there's only one demon. But do we want to try to rate? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Zombul. Uh, I think Zombul bluffing a Zombul game uh, as a Poe is great. Uh, having the kills go really slowly with sinking a lot of kills and maybe throwing in some kills where there shouldn't be kills because maybe. You have a gossip uh, bluff going sure. around. Great, perfect, amazing. But, and then just uh, all at once, like when there's four people and they're like, okay, now I think we start killing uh, like dead people. Uh, then you just slap them with three and then you're like, okay, it's a Poe game, not a Zumble game. Whoopsie. Yeah. Um, but then obviously like you have to survive till that point. Uh, yep. to do that anyway. Yep. So I think it's like, it's a like fun like pub bluff, but it it it's risky in the sense that you do have to not be a Zambul candidate either. Yeah. So I think with the right bluff, it definitely works. Um, yep. I I think honestly, selling a Zambul world as any demon is actually pretty interesting if you can remain outside of suspicion and if you are going to do this obviously the thing you are going to try to do 
is get earlier kills double tapped over and over and over and over again. You want to somehow remain alive while pushing suspicion on all of the dead people. Um, and it can be a difficult thing to navigate, but I do think that if you can somehow, in the similar, it, honestly, in the similar vein to the courtier, if you can sell that it is a different demon and based on your bluff, like, or whatever you are trying, like, coming forward with, um, like, push the world even farther, uh, it's, it's great. Like, it's the way that you, I don't want to say the way, but one of the ways that you win this game as evil is by convincing town what type of demon is in play um especially on bmr and uh if you can if you are a demon especially like the shab or the poe that kills like much faster if you can slow it down and make others think that it's zambul or pukka then all of a sudden at the end you just rush down finish them off and you're good to go yep does it belong in s tier with courtier Absolutely not, because you do still have to survive. That's true. That's fair, actually. Yeah. I think A is the highest I would put it, but it's a very fun game plan. I think I'm down for A. Um, I think the... Uh, I I don't see enough of the time... Um, like, And maybe, honestly, it's for the reason that uh, people hate Zumble games, because uh, they take so long, usually. Um, but I don't see a lot of players uh, bluffing a zombie world as a different type of demon. And I think, um, I don't know, I, I think that's the more interesting thing to do. Um, if you're the Shab, bluffing either Zambul or Pukka, um, just sinking kills and never, never really regurgitating. Obviously, if you execute no one dies day one, um, that'll be a little bit harder of a task for you to to take up but um but it's not out of the realm of possibility um and i i always will um if i have a player who is playing a demon who is you know sort of slowing things down rather than going like very headstrong rush down um i'm always going to be much more inclined to try to help that player safely navigate the world that they're trying to create um by you know, utilizing what I can in terms of a tinker, in terms of uh, gossip, or who who I have the sailor drink with and get drunk. Um, all of that is going to be sort of in that player's favor. Yep. The best demon. Uh, Pekka is the only role on the script that I actively enjoy. Um, hooray! <laughs> um, I mean... I think that Zombul is really the only one you can bluff without, um, without like being having a courtier bluff who's drunking one of the other three demons because, yeah. um, like Pukka, like it has to be an assassin who kills like, uh, like a like a sailor day one, and then again that could be the pukka or it could be the sailor oh, sorry the, or the assassin and then like this one's hard to ver it's hard to bluff it's definitely one of the ones where you just have to uh you as the pukka are probably bluffing a different theme and like it's a po game um I think I think this is yeah. the hardest demon world to bluff because you have to everything has to line up. Um, you have to kill the fool in one night um, without them having been like put on the block at all. Uh, same to a certain extent goes for Sailor. You have to convince a chambermaid that their information was wrong the night before. Um, which is possible, but it's just, it's very, because of the way the Pukka kills, um, it's, it requires just so much effort. Um, the, the other thing you could do, 
if you are lucky um, and you execute a, a, a moon child, a tinker, a lunatic day one, um, if you have a godfather, is godfather attack the fool and have whatever ever other demon, probably a side of Zambul, um, also attack into the fool that night. Um, but it's just so... There's just so much that that sort of needs to happen um, to successfully sell a Pucka world that I think it's it's sort of one of those things uh, where we discussed in TB where if you you know if if you have people thinking that it's a spy game when it's not actually a spy game, great, you're doing great, but it's probably yeah. not something that you are going to walk into being like this is my game plan and successfully execute it you're probably going to just find yourself in a world based on circumstances where your players are like i think it's a pucka game and you're like it's definitely not but okay that's great um so i don't know i i i love pucka as a demon um in terms of trying to bluff a world or bluff that it is a puff world i would i i think this is the d entry for me i don't think uh, and and I think that's in similar yeah. lines with how we thought about Spy. Um, it's it's a great minion. It's just like it's so niche and circumstantial, and you don't often control that circumstance. You're often led into that circumstance. The other thing is like if you bluff a Spy world, then like people are going to claim roles. And if you yeah. uh, bluff a Zambul world, people are going to, um, like, be more wary to kill dead players. Yep. What's the advantage of bluffing a Pucka world specifically, though? Um, the mostly regarding things like the gossip, things like a chambermaid who, um, like, casting doubt on whether or not they the information that they would have gained was accurate. I think is is sort of the only the only advantage in in this yeah. case. Um, casting suspicion on uh, if the god or if the grandmother was the first to die in the night, casting suspicion on whoever their grandchild is um, as a means of oh well you were clearly pucka poisoned, and so but again and this is this is also why I think it's. It's something you might walk into occasionally. I don't think you're ever going to. Honestly, um, I will raise the challenge. If you uh, if you can build a um, if you can play a game of BMR as a non pucka demon and sell a pucka world from the very get go, I want to hear all about it. And I don't know, maybe there'll be a prize. I don't know. Who knows? I um, would much rather do that, but have it so that figure out who can bluff an entire game as, as the professor and not get that much suspicion <laughs> on you. I would much rather see that. I want to see that game. That sounds like a fun game. Yeah. Um, Shab? Bluffing Shab, like, that's going to be another thing that you walk into. It's hard to get a lot more kills as... Uh, like consistently as a demon, um, you like almost, all it, you almost yeah. need the gossip to help you. <laughs> like you need the gossip to help you, and then by making it so that there people think it's a shab game, you get the gossip to be killed. Yep, that's pretty much it. That's yep. the bluffing a shab is basically by gossip, and perhaps depending on who the professor revived, by you as well. Yep, but otherwise. Like, uh, I think along with Pucka, it doesn't really... It's another one that you more stumble into than yep. you actively do, and it doesn't benefit much. So I, I'm honestly fine to put it directly next to Pucka unless there's something I'm forgetting. I, I think it is easier to sell than Pucka because you can always sell a Shabaloth sinking kills to make it seem like it's not a Shab game. Um... And, and that, I think, is a little bit more believable than trying to also sell that whoever died, your information was incorrect. Um, or your power malfunctioned the day before, or whatever. Um, 
so so I I'm I'm more bottom C rather than D um in terms of in terms of world but I do think it's definitely um it's it's right down there I I, I don't think it's as you said I yeah. don't think it's something that you necessarily walk into the game being like this is the plan um but I do think that there are ways depending on the menu you have or the minions you have um depending on what else is in the game that you can sort of just um I think it's something you could more safely expect to walk into than Paka. Yield. Um and finally Poe. Um I think like a lot of other things Poe is more a demon you want to bluff is out of play rather than in play because you want that burst to happen without people expecting it. Yep. Um and this is like how do you how do you bluff Poe? Either you manage to get like three or four kills in a single night and none the night before, which is hard, but honestly like doable like everything else here a lot uh, if you play your cards right. Um, but you also have to have none the night before or little the night before. Um, I think it's also the only benefit from a Poe other than it's not one of the other demons is people are going to execute the demon on the final five or the final four rather yep. than the final three, which is, uh, which depending on the demon you are can be huge, but also if you were the demon candidate anyway, or you're only a one kill, uh, if you're the pucka, uh, then you're probably going to have a final three if they execute on final five. Yep. So, um, I think it's if it's a uh, it's uh, you're gonna have a I final three if if you are the pucket in that scenario you actually want uh you want to execute the target of your poison and that way it'll look like yeah. you're going into a po charge um so yeah I I do think um I think maybe it's hard but I I think it's I think it's easier than either Shabaloth or or Pukka, and if you can successfully do it, uh, you are putting pressure on good to execute far earlier than they would normally have to. And yeah. that that is incredibly powerful. Um, the problem is, if you get found out, then... Or if it is found out, then, um, then suddenly, like, things are sort of going to, like, backtrack or backpedal, but... Depending on the bless you have, you have you have a certain amount of options. Certainly. Yeah. And like, again, if people are looking at demon candidates earlier, that doesn't necessarily mean they kill less demon candidates a lot of the time. Yep. Like, if people think in final five that there is a Poe, you are the pucka they kill top demon candidate in final five one person dies because you're the pucka then they still get two executions um and they probably go for a big huger demon candidate in five anyway and then they're eh i don't know i th i think it's fine yeah. like i think zumble is just the main bluff that's this I, demon but i, I think, think Poe's fine i agree yeah um but I do think I, I think Zambul, Po, Shab, Aka, A, B, C. Yeah, I, I or... think that's pretty much yeah. Yeah. Well, I so said, what about travelers? No, we didn't. No, we're not. We're not doing travelers. We didn't do travelers. Budon's for... my favorite bluff. <laughs> Shut up. It's not a bluff. Um, you simply haven't had the skills to bluff Voodoo. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I will drink with the Voodoo every single day. Uh, How dare you? <laughs> it's rude. I'm just inky I love protecting the Voodoo. Um, oh. No, uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's Bad Moon Rising in a nutshell in terms of, of bluffs. Uh, anytime, Quartier, take it. 100% of the time. Uh, professor, uh, you know, talk... Talk to me about the game that you bluffed Professor and somehow uh, 
got to final three and lived. Either as good or as evil. Please. I don't I don't care. Um Please. But I would I would I love want to see to this. Um, Please. But uh but thank you again, Guggy, for bringing up this idea because it's been a lot of fun. This is sort of let's let's call it episode two. Um and we'll be back with more uh going over I extension cord. I did a little bit of we you know we can go over extension cord at some point. I think that would be a fun one. Well, I, I was making the joke of I thought you were saying yes. uh we're going over S and V and I was saying extension cord because it's obviously the the fourth yes, uh, yes. base script. But yes. yeah. Um but uh where where in T B I didn't really do any sort of prep in BMR I did a little bit of thinking about where I was going to put the roles. Uh and S N V I think I'm gonna have to spend a little bit of time because it's very wacky, uh, and I can't wait. To now, let me that. start right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but thank you yeah. for joining us, everybody, and we will see you next time. I won't. I'm blind. <laughs> <laughs> if you cut that out, you're a coward. <laughs> wow, that was a great video because it had me in it. If you want to see more great videos with me in it, and I guess some other semi-decent ones without me, uh, then subscribe uh, to the channel. Uh, I don't think I need to tell you how to do that. Uh, and, if, and if you don't know how to do that, honestly, just don't subscribe at that point. Guggy! If you did enjoy this video, uh, please give a like or a comment down below. And if you are looking for other ways to support, definitely consider becoming a patron on Patreon. Shout out to our current members. It is incredible that you have all stuck with us, and we are very thankful for your support. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye.